Yo, thank you, Big T Super Soldier with level 99 Gadar. Thanks. Hello? Big T Hello? Super Soldier with level 99 Gadar sent $10 <laughs> now that I Hi. think about it. Hey. Nando did start the debate by saying that he didn't What's want up, to go bro? hard on board. Not much. What are you doing? He was a big fan. And he was getting what? pretty liberal. What are you doing? Wipers, what makes you think? Definitely Seuss. Oh. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you Hi. hear me? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I can hear you. What's going on, King? Oh, not much. What are you up to? You sound tired. Yeah, I'm tired. Why? <laughs> it's been a long week, man. I'm working. Yeah. Working yeah. hard. Yeah, me too, man. I've been trying to trying to hold it down. I got a freaking night off in two weeks. Yeah, you're a working man. I hate it. I hate streaming. Bullshit. Yeah, I can't. I got to get back to it, man. I can't wait to get back. Yeah. When, when are you coming back? You said Wednesday, I think, or something? Yeah, Wednesday. The show comes back. That's good, That's good at least. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a little mad that you still don't think I'm an incel. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, you're not, so. I mean, I, I'm like a new incel. Yeah, that's like one of these uh, born-again virgins type deal, you know, when women say that, when they say, <laughs> oh, well, I saw the Lord, and now I'm no longer a whore. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I mean, you can say whatever you want, but. What about you, can't, you know? What about what? what about new cell? No. No. No, I'm sorry. I just get it's nothing. You're, you're subtracting. You're subtracting from the experience of the real incel. I don't care what you call yourself. You can't call yourself an incel. It's, it's not right. It <laughs> diminishes what it diminishes my <laughs> experience. I mean, how so though? I mean, how does it do, how does it take away from you? I feel like you and I have gone through a lot of the same things. You're married. You were married. <laughs> like that's so. It's just not really quite the same. That'd be like you getting. I don't know. That'd be like you getting a cold and you go into like a children's hospital and you go up to like an eight year old with leukemia with no hair and you're like, we're the same. <laughs> hey, we're both sick, right? <laughs> Doesn't this fucking suck being sick, man? I wish we were healthy. You know, you. <laughs> That's what you're doing. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna steal the valor. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm claiming stolen valor here. I'm doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's your, that's your, and that's so typical of you. You know, <laughs> now I get it. Now I understand what the veterans must feel like when you were doing that <laughs> to the veterans. Talking about blood gulps, Iraq. <laughs> now I get it. Yeah, uh, you know what? Stole. I'm just. I'm. Uh, I am proclaiming stolen valor here. I demand my uh, my incel discount at uh, Culver's. You know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like the asshole that like confronts you and is like, "Oh, really? You're an incel? Oh, yeah. Where'd you serve? <laughs> what, what regiment? What battalion, bro? <laughs> Fucking uniform's not even real." <laughs> What board you lurking for, Chan, bro? Huh? You are nine K, Paul? What is it? <laughs> I'm literally that guy. I've literally become that guy. That like hothead meltdown in the fucking mall cafeteria because the uh, insignia is upside down and your fucking boots aren't tied right. Yeah, that's, I got, I got my wedding ring on. <laughs> yeah, what's, that, what's that ring on, buddy? Huh? What's that ring? <laughs> yeah, yeah, meltdown in front of Auntie Ann's. I bet, you, I bet you don't even know where Elliot Rogers was from, huh? You don't even know where he was from. <laughs> literally, literally. Uh, he was from uh, an island, right? <laughs> uh, he was from California. <laughs> uh, Elliot Roger. Yeah, I'll still, yeah. I'll still never forget. Sean got fucking hit up by the FBI because he said something like. Uh, I'm going to turn this aisle into Isle of Vista or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Those are the good old days, huh? Yeah. Hey, everyone's loving that stream we did the other day. 
Oh, yeah, the politically provoked one? Yeah, it's all the rage right now. You I know. This? Yeah, I know. Even on my kiwi farms, they were like, listen, I hate Nick. I think he's a fucking faggot, but the dingo got destroyed in that debate. You have to admit. <laughs> Literally on like kiwi farms, they're admitting this. It's on like Gamer Uprising. They're, dude, I went on Gamer Uprising and Andrew Anglin watched it and he took one of my quotes and he said, R-O-F-L, rolling on the floor laughing. I was like, <gasps> yeah, let's go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> fan he noticed me senpai noticed me <laughs> it's it's a good so feeling a man. big moment for me yeah no it yeah. was awesome man i wish i could have i was like wanting to chime in more but kai wouldn't shut the fuck up you know i was like shut as up as always kai. you know as usual well it's i like kai don't get me wrong but it's like look man you got no business going after wignats here okay you're like you're like a you're like a year old, you know. You don't even know what a wignet is. Literally, literally, yeah, literally. He doesn't even remember the old the old days, you know. He's uh, that's okay. We love him, but you know yeah. what? There's this sort of there's this problematic strain where he said this thing on "You Are Here," where he's like, "Oh, like if you take this incel bit too far, then you're gonna become." Just as shrill as mm. like um uh like a spinster like as a, as a dried up woman or whatever. And I said, and I go in the group chat and I'm like, Ah, Kai, why are you talking shit, boy? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and everyone's like, What? What? I'm like, Yeah, Kai attacked me on Elijah Schaefer, and everybody's like, What? Kai, get in here! <laughs> and then he gets in there and he's like, Hey, what's going on? And, uh, and I'm like, nah, I'm just playing, uh, you know, I'm like, but I am an in South. So, you know, just, just watch it, pal. Yeah. And then we're in the stream the other day and he starts saying this stuff about, oh, well, if you're doing a bit, then you're not an incel. And, uh, and it's sort of like this weird, like midrash. It's like this retconning bullshit where it's like, here's how I'm going to basically attack incels without attacking Nick directly. And it's like, hold on a second. I am an incel. I am an incel. How dare you? He's saying this like, oh, we can't be incels. We can't play into the bit of hating women. And it's like, yeah. oh, so now the fucking talking cheese is going to tell us about, like, he. this is the guy that tweets nonstop about fucking, well, not like, you know what I'm saying, like, not fucking girls, but like, fucking girls you know what i mean like yeah i mean he, like he had in his profile on cozy he was like i'm going to war with booby because i think it's still in, no yeah engage in a war against booby conservatism yeah so this nigga's tweeting every day about girl this girl that girl whatever and then he's gonna come in and say actually guys i think that um the incel thing's going a little bit too far and you know and all that and um just, I don't know. I feel like there's uh, so something brewing there. Sort of got to nip it in the bud, you know. Now that you bring him yeah. up, I, well, I feel like I feel like what what Kai is doing, and like maybe maybe I'm being like a little too generous. Maybe I'm maybe I've gotten soft in the past, you know, my old age or whatever. I feel like he fe like he has to like it's like when someone's like needlessly explaining something that doesn't need to be explained, you know. That's what it kind of feels like to me. Like he's trying to like elaborate on something that doesn't need any sort of, you know, elaboration to begin with. You know what I mean? And he's like, well, you know, we like, cause like, I, th I think he's like, well, we, you know, we want families, we want white babies and stuff and all this, like, you know, going down that whole like rhetorical path of like bullshit. It's like, yeah, whatever. No, I just hate women, man. It's not here's, like a joke. Here's what I'm going to say. And this is going to be a little bit out there. Okay. This is going to be a little bit radical. Um, and just playing devil's advocate here a little bit. So, you know, if everyone will allow me, we're all adults. We could all entertain, entertain ideas without necessarily accepting or agreeing with them. Um, but you know, there is this sort of, um, we're definitely getting to something here. Cause I, I agree with you. We could chalk it up and say, oh, he's just sort of like explaining the joke or whatever, which is like, you know, it defeats the joke, but you're right. It ain't no joke. Mm -hmm. Like Rakim said, it ain't no <laughs> joke. Okay? It's not a joke. And, you know, like when I read Andrew Anglin, he gets this. Now, I don't know if I go as far as Anglin, but Anglin says, don't get married. Anglin says, 
don't get married. Women are fucking crazy. They're going to take all your stuff. You know, divorce rate, you look at, you know, a non-virgin woman, divorce rate, once they have one, two, three, four, five partners, it's just like the, the probability goes precipitously up of mm-hmm. odds for divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's one school of thought where, you know, you've got angling on one end of the spectrum that says you, you should not marry them. There's yeah. another end of the spectrum where you've got this sort of more mainstream normie thing, which is younger and it's definitely more adjacent to the mainstream where it says like, and, and you always hear this shit where they say like the state of women, the state of modern women, the way women are now. I always hear this kind of equivocating bullshit where people say it's the state of women, the state of women you mean like the nature implying thank you it's like it's a it's an immutable permanent feature not yeah. not like it's a condition not like it's some uh, contemporary condition or contemporary phenomenon no it's the nature but mm-hmm. so you'll hear the, these kinds of like the, these words where they say like well it's the way women are and you just need to do this you just need to do that blah, blah, blah. and he says you know and his position is like well We can't be too incel. We can't take the joke too far because we have to be fruitful and multiply. And we've got to have, we've got to get married and we got to have kids. And, you know, here's the deal. Here's the deal. It's put me in a tough spot because there's a little bit of a conflict of interest for me because I'm not getting married anytime soon. I don't think it may ever happen with, uh, you know, the way things are going. So, so I don't know if I'm colored by, you know, my own experience too much and I'm not being objective, but there is sort of a real disagreement there. You know, some people like, and, and I, it honestly doesn't even need to be resolved because we have bigger things going on, but, but it is an interesting sort of question that there are these two different views and, you know, some people think it's like a joke or whatever, but no, there are two different worldviews here. And one says like, no, it's too far gone. Forget it. And then there's another side of it, which says, like, I don't even know something like ignore what's going on, pretend it's not as broad as it is, as the damage being done isn't as broad and the risks aren't as as substantial as they are. Just hold your nose or something like that and just engage anyway. Anyway, it's just sort of an interesting question. But like I do, I think, you know, I don't know if I would say that, like, oh, no one should get married. I don't know if I would go that far. But. But, but I would definitely go farther than to say this kind of thing about, oh, well, let's, let's be careful and let's, let's endeavor not to offend women too much or play yeah. into some kind of, it's like, it's not a joke. It's not a fucking joke. Okay. Yeah. The, the incel thing is not a joke. And, you know, there's a real problem here. And there's a, then like, I feel like if I'm not, you people like you and I are not an anchor there's this slipping that's always going on. And you, I catch it all the time with everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a slipping that goes on where people are basically becoming feminists and they're turning into feminists and they're turning into little good boys and little simpy bitch boys. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, so we gotta, we gotta hold the line here on this because like I heard, I hear a comment like that where it's like, Oh, real incels basically are like pieces of shit. He goes, like, oh, real yeah. incels are just as bad as the women. And then you hear shit where, like, even in your live chat, people are going, oh, well, it's a man's responsibility for the women. Oh, it's God, men's yeah. fault, right? Like, that kind of stuff makes you want to, I don't, can't even say what it makes you want to do. <laughs> yeah. It's on a poo and pee. Yeah, I mean, like, my, I, I guess my position on the whole thing is, like, look, I, I don't expect everyone to claim incel. You know, I get some guys want to have kids and they want to have families and stuff. I support that. That's your prerogative. But you can do that and still support your incel brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like you can you I think you're I think it's a a totally normal thing to expect. Like, hey, you you want to do that? You want to you want to take that risk for yourself and you need. But if you are going to do it, you need to acknowledge that it is a risk first and foremost, because, again, women will divorce you, take all your shit. I, I mean, literally live in it right now. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, so you need to, you need to acknowledge that risk and you need to be firm and, uh, you know, uh, 
and you can do that though without shitting on incels and i think that's kind of part partially what kai did was kind of you know kind of shit on incels a little bit you know if kai if kai wants to go off and have 10 kids or whatever that's his prerogative i'm not going to give him any you know too much shit for it i'll give him a little shit for it but uh you know but also just, you know kai is a mormon kai yeah. is a mormon and that's part of mormonism that which is different than catholicism mormonism says um like you you need to get married like mm -hmm. getting married is like a moral imperative um so so let's not forget that either and you know in the latin tradition the latin church the priests don't get married hello the priests don't get married and even in the eastern tradition you've got monks that go up to a mountain and they don't see women their entire lives mm -hmm. you know and so this it's like it's also this theological thing where the mormons say it's a moral imperative that you get married and have lots of kids that actually isn't true about real christianity which is catholicism or you know orthodox christianity and again it's not to say that marriage is bad i don't i would never say that marriage is bad marriage is good but definitely with mormonism and this is just you could look this up theologically there is more of an emphasis on i, I think it's actually for this does not exist with catholics for mormons if you don't have kids, it's a bad thing, if I'm not mistaken. If yeah. you don't get married and don't have kids, it's a bad thing, which isn't true with Catholics. With Catholics, you can't get married if you're not, uh, if you're not um, fertile. And that just goes to show, and like, you know, obviously the most, the most holy people in Catholicism, the priests and the nuns, are not married, you know? So, um, so there's that aspect to it as well. And, you know, so I would also throw in one other thing, which is... Um, and this is a very narrow what's going on there you what are you at a train station my nigga <laughs> yeah i mean literally there's a train that runs right by my right past my house man i i, just, I can't get away from it um yeah so <laughs> <laughs> um well uh, so so that's the thing about mormonism the other thing i'll say is this uh in in a very narrow sense i actually don't think the family always necessarily makes a person stronger. This is going to be a super extremely controversial claim that I'm no, I'm going to get shit for it. But, and this is strictly for someone like me or people like me, but if I go out and get married and have kids and I, some people might look at this and s say, Oh, that's very cynical or maybe materialistic or whatever. But it's like, if I go and get married and have kids, like I'm a full time revolutionary basically or activist mm -hmm. and people might roll their eyes at that and say, oh really you're like a live streamer or whatever but like think about it if we're committed to serious ambitious political goals um and we're talking about drinking death like water the dynamic has actually changed a little bit when you enter in these familial responsibilities you know can someone go out there and be drinking death like water when they're married with 10 kids the same way that they can if they're unmarried with no kids uh you know I, i'm just spitting facts here i mean this is just factual problem mm -hmm. there with that kind of thinking for the kind of business that we're in um so none none of this is to say and it's not that i'm anti-family i'm pro-family i think people should have families and have kids and everything but we just have to think about these things that's all i'm just trying to start a conversation here and provoke some thought it's it's not to and I've been doing my show for years. People know my position on this. People should get married and have kids, and that's how they'll find their fulfillment. But with some of these some of these things, it's a very it's a I think there's a lot of these uh, words and phrases that are being used, and I don't know that it's necessarily subversive, but there's definitely a little bit more to it than to just say, oh well. It says be fruitful and multiply and stop being real incels. And if you're a real incel, you're a piece of shit and just as bad as like women. I don't have a problem with Kai. I like Kai. I just disagree with what he said. And um, I've just been kind of noticing there's like this, there's always this strain and we always have to guard against it of guys. It started with the thought wars years ago when people were saying women are a net positive in the movement and, you know, other crazy nonsense like that. And then you go on a stream and we beat the shit out of Wignats, and then you hear this stuff about, oh, Nick's doing a bit. Nick's not a real incel. He's just joking around, because real incels can't joke around, and real incels are tr like trash or something, and we all just need to get enslaved to women and, and have lots of kids, 
and like let's just and that's just how it is it's like well it's the it's not so simple and you know we should sort of consider that there are other points of view out there not necessarily like you know we want to take everything on the daily stormer as a gospel truth because some of it's a little it's a little alarmist and that, i think that's the purpose is to be provocative i don't know that you're supposed to read it and just take everything literally maybe yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, maybe england would say that but um so that's just my thinking on it i mean honestly and like i don't know i don't i don't i don't want to <laughs> i'm really not trying to shit on kai i do like kai a lot i think he's a good guy and i think he's a super nice guy but i also think that I, I don't even necessarily think that he believes what he said to a certain extent. I literally just think that he was on a big show and he wanted to say what would be more palpable. You know what I mean? Which I think is a problem in of itself, though, too. I think that's a whole a, a different problem entirely in of itself. I think Kai didn't really want to say anything that was uh, controversial or support incels because the you know the audience over there probably wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't be as receptive to it or whatever, which I think is, you know, you know, kind of a problem in of itself, but you know, I don't know. I think, I think it's a I think it's a mixture of both maybe. Um, in either way, I just, I think it, I think it needs to be talked about at least. I don't think there's any harm in talking about it. I mean, I've talked about it with Kai before, you know, and I've told him, I was like, eh, well, you could have worded that a lot better, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I love Kai. I think his content's great. I like, he's very articulate. And everything. And and I don't, you know, I don't want to do this gay like, no, 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 I like him. But I do like him. I'm not trying to shit all over him. I don't want people in the chat. I'm, you know, I see some people in the chat saying, oh, Kai's whatever. No, I like Kai, but I just hear those things. And it's like, um, excuse me, no. But that's really sort of out of step, I think, with where we are on that, mm -hmm. just pointing that out. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, and, you're no. giving me shit for fucking simping the other day, so it's like, you know what I mean? You get, you need, you need bros to check you every now and again, you know? Check, yeah. Well, and um, and here's the other thing I'll say, and there's sort of a broader point on this is like, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and you know, some people question like, oh, why didn't you just, um, you know, work a Daily Wire and infiltrate and work your way up, and then. You know, then you go full red pill, then you reveal your power level. And it was very intentional why I didn't do that. It's because I like, and without going into that, because this is only just, it's, it's outside the scope of the point I'm trying to make here. But along a similar vein, I made that decision years ago. It was a deliberate, intentional, thought out decision why to do that. Well, here we are now, six years later, five, six years later. And I think that was the right decision. As I'm going through this, and we're at a crossroads now with everything that's gone on over the past year, I've been thinking on this a lot, and I've come to the conclusion, because there is sort of this perpetual fork in the road, this question about, you know, do we sort of make overtures to the mainstream, or do we retain a more principled stand? I don't even think that's really the best way to phrase it, but, but what my my conviction over the past year, what I've come to the conclusion about is that we are fanatical. We are a fanatical movement. And I really believe the only way we're going to achieve sort of the kinds of big changes that we want to see in America is if, and I said this years ago at AFPAC, not in these terms exactly, but if it's a small group of highly motivated people, you know, from AFPAC one, I said that, that are going to change the world, the small group of motivated people have to be like, you know, got to be ride or die niggas. Like I just posted that on Gab with from the Anglin article. The, the only way that it's going to be brought about is if we have true believers. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't, you know, misunderstand what I mean when I say true believers. I don't mean like, oh, yeah, like that's so fucking true, King. <clears throat> no, like a true believer. Like, like it's what defines who you are. You know, it's an idea that defines who you are and you're, commitment and loyalty to the idea it sort of defines your life and um so the, the the time and you can see things are getting very real um if you're afraid of dying if you're afraid of things that you like being taken away from you you're not going to be able to stand up in the face of uh conspiracy charge from the government and the kind of shit that they're doing now with the total censorship and the debanking and the you know, I, I'm sure in the future there's going to be more political violence from the left and things. And it's like, so if it's all just sort of like a casual commitment, it's sort of like, 
one foot in career, one foot in like I actually care somewhat. It's it's never going to survive the the realness that is about to happen. So, you know, so there needs to be this like revolutionary fervor, this like revolutionary commitment to the cause, which, you know, there's there's definitely, you know, I know people are always kind of prodding me about this like Doyle phenomenon and things. And I know there's some like APU is a good example of an organization that they're like, well, we're like America first but with better optics. It's like we could keep fucking splitting hairs. And, you know, in two years, there's going to be something more mainstream than APU. That's like, well, we're like APU, but better optics. And then like years later, <laughs> you're like, well, we're like that other thing, but with like better optics. And like, we keep splitting hairs about like what degree we are trying to ingratiate ourselves with like the fucking Jewish system. But ultimately, whatever the tactics are, the people behind it have to be true, absolutely true believers. And, um, and, and really, and maybe a way to say this is like quality over quantity. I mean, that's a very reductive way to say it. But, but that's basically the, the premise here is, um, you know, and then there's a lot more to it than that. That's just one aspect of it. But that's just something I've been thinking about. So this kind of stuff about like, oh, we're going to try and make it like palatable. Oh, we'll never win over casual people. It's like, yeah, we're never, I, I don't know that we are going to ever win over a casual NFL viewer. I don't know that we are ever going <laughs> to win over, you know, um, women in general. Like my, I don't, well, and let me say it this way. I'm not really interested in winning over women per se. I'm interested in winning over fanatical, brilliant, young white men. That's what I, that's who I'm interested in winning over because you know what? It's going to be those people that have the brains. It's going to be those people that have the capability to deliver the kind of change that we need to see. You know, when people, oh, we got to win, oh, we got to win an election or we got to get women to like start watching our content. It's like, no, we need a fanatical, small network of, of these radicalized, brilliant, young white men they are willing to give it all, put it all on the line, like KGB style, like secret agent, MK Ultra, like, you know, Manchurian candidate type shit to get in there and do what has to be done as opposed to this sort of queer thing where it's like, hey, hello, can I talk to you about America first today? So imagine like, you know, you're at a football game and like, you know, you want to put the quarterback puts his team first. That's like what our government has to do with like America we're a common sense, true conservative alternative to Turning Point USA. And it's like, uh, it's not a fucking like bake sale. It's not like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not the exhibition of extracurriculars at, at college, you know, extracurricular night at college. It's like, we're talking about the government trying to kill you. We're talking about people getting black bagged in the middle of the night and brought to a CIA black site and tortured to death. Like, and we think we're going to do that with people going like, so listen, Sydney, what I mean to say is women are totally fucking awesome, but just like modern women are like bad vibes, bro. Women need to be good vibes, like sundresses and shit. And, you know, it's like, that's not really the wavelength that we're on here for, for true political change. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just I don't want women involved in politics at all, like for really of any capacity. I just don't think there, there's nothing productive that comes from it, you know. So this whole idea of like all oh, America first has got to win over like women is like, no, I want to win over their husbands. So their husbands will put their fucking foot down and be like, no, this is who you're voting for. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's that's the that's the successful strategy, I think. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a political genius like you are. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you totally here. It's like. I, I just, I just hate women. I just don't, I don't, I don't want them. I don't, I mean, really, honestly, if I could like snap my fingers, I would have like no women watching my show ever, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that would be the ideal environment for me. No women at all to watch my show in this whole like, yeah. uh, Oh, well, uh, Sydney, look, I, uh, I concede that point to you that maybe, uh, in I was like, bruh, never. I mean, you should never concede a point to a woman ever for any reason, even if you're wrong. You never concede a point to a woman. You just don't do it. Yeah. Well, it's like, just to me, I, I hear this kind of shit about like, what, like what Mio said, where he's like, <laughs> the 
fuck out of right wing women. Like they, we need to be nice to them. And Brittany was, you know, fucking liberal, and now she's right wing. And then I think about, you know, how when um, like North Korea, they make those propaganda videos of their army to show how like tough they are, and like, oh yeah, got these, just like these e- people like breaking tires. <laughs> Yeah, they're like breaking concrete blocks over their face and like screaming, <laughs> like doing all this insane stuff. Like that's the level of like, in my opinion, the kind of fanaticism that's need the sort of toughness. Like I just I I survey what goes on and I'm like, but the, we're we're not we're not bringing the kind of seriousness about our worldview here. It's like what we're seeking is a total repudiation of liberalism, a complete and total repudiation of modernism, liberalism. And people are like, well, we're, we're still kind of going to have that. Like, well, but is that going to interfere with like my plans for what, what I wanted when I was, when I was raised or whatever, like, uh, is it going to make me sort of um, disagreeable with, with my normie friends or something like, that cannot enter in as a consideration. You know, we've got to have like this. And I know I've said in the past, like, oh, that's LARPing or whatever, but it's punish Nick. It's punish Nick. I went through hell. I'm still going through hell. You know, my whole life is going to be going through hell, doing like being on the no fly list and f- feds fucking with me being subpoenaed and stuff like that. And it's like, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's that cartoon that Chris Emerson made where, you know, in 40 years, I'm going to have like a plasma rifle and an exosuit on the fucking <laughs> beach in Tampa Bay, you know, looking at a picture of myself in the America First studio, like a beard smoking a fucking cigarette and like, you know, wondering how, oh, how did it get this way? Like that, that we're hurtling towards that reality. Like you're, that's you're going to look like ball. me, man. <laughs> you're going to look like me <laughs> <Yeah>. soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So. Yeah, I don't know. I it's uh we need to get like one of those uh, North Korea training videos for America first, but it's us like throwing women through like sheets of drywall and like smashing cinder blocks <laughs> over their heads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we need. No, I mean you're right, man. And it's like I thought you brought up a good point too. It's like the you know, dude, even just having a wife, you know, locked me down. You know, from being able to do shit, you know, whether it was like streaming or like going and doing stuff. And that's like even without kids, you know, so like you had kids to the equation. It's like you'd never be able to get anything done, man. Like, yeah. You, you know, everyone ex- like I don't know why everyone w- wants or expects you to get married or whatever. It's so retarded. It's like what? The- First off, what's the rush? You know what I mean? Like, what's the big hurry? Exactly. I mean, you're fucking famous. You're rich. Yeah, you know, like, I think you'll be like, if you wanted to find somebody in 10 years, I think you'll be OK, you know. But yeah, I mean, like you're doing real shit. You don't have time to fucking deal with that, man. Like, it's retarded. Yeah, no, it's it's um well, and. And here's what I think about with, uh, you know, this conversation. I think I said this on my show recently. The question is, who who is being conquered here? Who is conquering whom? You know, when I hear these lines about like, oh, well, you know, um, the real incels suck. It's like, well, who's conquering who here? Are we, you know, what? in other words, in, in our quest for... Uh, market share in the conservative thought space um you know of course these sort of rhetorical compromises are made sometimes ideological compromises are made um and initially though these kinds of compromises are made to broaden the appeal broaden the appeal to a larger constituency but in the course of doing that uh, are we are we sort of imperializing the conservative thought space with this with this tactic or is the conservative thought space conquering us by forcing us to conform to its rules and standards, you know? So we go out to these conservatives and say, Hey, we're not so bad after all thinking that we're going to convince them to become radical. Well, is, are, are we convincing them to become radical or are we convincing ourselves to become less radical. Like, and it's a question, you know, it's a dance that's done. Unquestionably, we have made the conservative mainstream more radical over the past five years. But now, now that the tide has turned, so to speak, or, you know, there's, it's a more dynamic situation. We've got to ensure 
that we continue to push the envelope. I've been saying this for years. We have got to keep saying, you know, there's still so much work to be done. We have to keep pushing right. We have to be the right word flank, always pushing. And and what this requires is that we're never quite we were never quite within the periphery of the mainstream. Yeah, that's the important thing. And that's the thing that people don't like because we've gotten sort of like a taste of like, okay, we're known, we've got notoriety and so on. And what a lot of people do then is they get absorbed in and they're like, okay, and now I'm a fixture. Um, but we've, we've got to remain on the outside, dragging it further to the right. Like it's a good thing that I'm not totally accepted yet. It's a good thing that my name is still anathema because you know what, if I was like totally accepted and they're promoting my name and stuff, that would mean that I had been conquered. But you know what, I've been doing this for so long. I've got some powerful friends, but you know what, we're still out here, you know, and that's, that's actually how it has to be. If we're going to be true radicals, you know, we can't, we can't become like sellouts to the man and become the sort of like, you know, and become controlled opposition where then it's like, Hey, everybody, remember to watch Fox news. You're watching Disney channel. I'm Nicholas J. Fuentes. I'm a controlled griper. I'm going to talk about, you know, things that Pappy Cannon did. And I'm not going to talk about how much I dislike race mixing. And like, I'll never talk about the Jewish lobby. Like we'll could talk about why Israeli foreign aid is bad, but we could never talk about the Jewish lobby or the Holocaust industry. Like, so you you know it's important to remain on the outside pushing the window and and ensure always that we're conquering the mainstream conservative thought space and not the other way around because because it's like death by a thousand cuts they're they're eating and chipping away outside at the periphery with these kinds of things where it's like are are we making the mainstream more like us or are we making ourselves more like the mainstream like inevitably both things are happening at the same time but but who's on net? Who's who's winning out? And that's the sort of concern with those with this kind of shit about, uh, you know, incels suck and we just got to be like friendly faces or whatever. Like, no, I'm not friendly. I'm mean, not nice. OK, I'm a pissed <laughs> off white radical and I will not do the Disney Channel Mickey Mouse. But, 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 you know, you're watching Disney Channel. Fuck you. I will never do that. I am a groiper. I will never be allowed inside CPAC. Yeah, so true. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, and you're totally right for putting the foot down from from all this shit talk on us on us and cells, you know, because it's like we got it bad enough as it is, you know. Um, it was like it was like kind of like one thing that I thought was like because people like really view because you brought up APU or whatever. And I like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure you're like, you're, I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like, I don't view them as necessarily like enemies or anything like that. You know what I mean? I don't think these guys are our enemies, but I definitely still like view them as like competition. Right. And I do like, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's, I think that's like healthy to have. It's like, it's healthy to have like an APU. If, if only if that, that it makes the distinction of what America first does even more clear. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I like those guys, but um, yeah, I like them personally, and I don't. I don't think they're bad. I don't think their intentions are wrong. Um, but they, um, it, it's they. They don't quite grasp it. Like America First is a truly unique organization because there are many organizations that people perceive as similar, um, and they say, "Oh, well, they they just don't say this, or they just don't say that," and like. Okay, but it's those that's kind of like the that's where all the shit that matters is, is in yeah. those, you know, just doesn't cover this or that thing. And like, you know, so there's this fallacy where it's like, well, we'll just be on the other side of the line and we'll just be a little bit closer to the line than other people are and we'll have this sort of mainstream facade. And it's like, okay, but you're still on that side of the line. You're still on that with everybody else. And so the line isn't moving. You're getting closer to it, but the line isn't moving. You know, if, if the line is drawn in the sand and it says, okay, on this side, these are the acceptable things you could say. And on this side, these are the unacceptable things you cannot say. If people are getting closer to the line or dancing around it, the line isn't moving. The line just stays there. And the, you put a, an arm over the line and your fucking arm gets cut off. 
and you you dance on one side of the line and they're going to fucking shoot at you. And one time you're going to be on the side of the line and then they're going to shoot you and then you're done, you know? And like, that's the kind of game that's played. And it's like, by me existing, I'm walking across the line. I'm standing on the other side of it. And every moment that I'm not like shot dead where I stand, I'm moving the line, you know, because then people go, Hey, he, uh, he's still around. Hey, he's still there. Um, you know, maybe I could jump on that side of the line too. And, you know, then there's 10 people on the other side of the line and then they're like, okay, well, we can't shoot all those people. So, you know what, uh, I guess we'll just leave them alone. And then we keep moving further and further, but like, so I, a perfect analogy, but that's, that's sort of, um, you know, where, what they're doing, I don't think is as effective. I mean, everybody's got this idea of like, oh, well, we'll, we'll just get a little bit more edgy and you know whatever and i guess it all it all kind of helps a little bit but um you know i think america first is the movement um i think everybody should be rallying behind america first and it's like if michelle malkin could do it you can get over yourself and you could do it too you know what i mean like if michelle malkin's a part of this like a legendary author if like a con like that that was the big problem with like patrick casey with AFPAC too. It's like, okay, so Michelle has got the balls and she's got so much more to lose than everybody. And she's going to be there. And Gosar's a sitting congressman's going to be there. It's like, but you're not going to be there, nigga. Mm -hmm. And then it's like with, with a lot of these people where they're like, Oh, well, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to take a picture with you. Like, I don't know if I want to retweet you or follow you. Cause like, I'll get in trouble. It's like, okay. So you know, tell me why you have more to lose than Michelle Malkin or Congressman Gosar then. Like, you know, tell, tell me what your big idea is. Where, where's your movement that's going to be the vanguard for a truly revolutionary idea? Oh, wait, it doesn't exist. So, um, so I, like, I like those guys, but um, we just fundamentally, and, and that doesn't make us enemies. It doesn't make us enemies, but we, we just fundamentally disagree on the strategy. It's not, what they're, it's not that what they're doing isn't helpful. I think it is, and I think it is good, and I'm I'm glad that they're out there. But um, but we're with America first, obviously, and so we we believe I believe that what we're doing is the thing, you know. So yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to APU. It's it's sort of like religion. It's like you know when I was growing up, you used to believe in this stuff about like coexistence. But then it's like, well, if you're a Christian, you believe that like your God is God. So this stuff about like, well, you could have your thing, and that's great. It's like, well, that doesn't really work because if you're if you believe that your God is God, then uh, you can't, you know, you can't really be sort of like, um, you can't really be a cheerleader for the other side. And yeah. same, same thing with, uh, these guys. It's like, well, if, if we believe America first is the tip of the spear, you can't be like, well, um, but you know, but they're, it's like, no, I think that what they're doing is not, um, what we're doing and what we're doing is what's going to win. So that's my view on it. Yeah. I just, like, part of the reason why I bring them up, though, is, like, kind of to bring it back to, like, the politically provoked thing. It's, like, we can still be, like, amicable with those guys, even though we do have this, like, sort of competition or, like, you know, fundamental sort of disagreement. But we still at the – you know what I mean? Like, it's great. It's, like – this. it just goes to show, like, what happens when you're not a total, like, social and, and mental dead end, you know? Like, that – and that's the thing. It's, like, even with – I mean, honestly, we probably – I mean, I, at least I will speak for myself yeah. personally here. I probably agree more with the Wignats than I would your average APU guy, but it's the fact of the matter is most of the Wignats are just fucking retarded and you can't talk to them. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'd rather just, I'd rather at least be friendly with some of those APU guys, even though I probably agree with them a little less than, say, somebody like Dingo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, those. Those wingnats are just, it's, that was brutal the other day, that conversation. I mean, they're like literally the dumbest people I've ever talked to. And I, again, I don't even say that. It sounds like that's just a catty insult. Like you're literally the dumbest person like ever, but it's no, but it's true. Like I, I actually think those are the like, like dumb, like, and try saying it like a politically correct way. Cause I don't even mean it just to be like a sort of just, arbitrary insult it's like no those are quite literally probably the dumbest people i've ever talked to like especially dingo and oh, yeah. you know there's this there's this really faggoty thing that i that i hate where everybody wants to be like hey anybody that's got their heart in the right place is okay with me you know and it's like oh well he's it's like no 
that guy is inferior. Okay. And like talking to him is, is like, it's insulting to me that I would even talk to him because he is so stupid. And like, I just have contempt for that kind of stupidity, just like hardcore contempt. And like at a certain point in the debate, I'm like, just shut your mouth. Like you're insulting everybody on the stream. Like th the idea even that we're entertaining what you have to say is like an insult to all of us. <laughs> like I could not even continue with the charade. Like no, I will not even sit here and be a party to this idea that what you have to say is valuable or like anybody should be listening to it. I don't respect you. I don't respect your opinion. Like you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be speaking on these issues. You literally should be working underground. Like you should not be seen or heard. You should be working underground with like fucking soot all over your fat, ugly face, you know, then toiling away, like digging for rocks and stuff. Like, so, I mean, that, that guy in particular is just like the biggest bonehead ever. And like the problem with Wignats is we're just better than they are. I mean, like at the, at the end of the day, I mean, people could say, oh, well, you know, it's all just drama. It's like, no, objectively speaking, like we are superior. They are dumber. They're uglier. They're fatter. They're poorer. They're less successful. I mean, we are objectively superior. And like, to, I, I no longer wish to pretend anymore like that there's more to it than that. I, I think that that's really a source of a lot of the resentment. And why would we why would we keep up this charade that it's about something other than that at this point? You know, I mean, these are people that just on a, on a human being level, um, they're just not up to par. They're just not on our level. So and like you could listen to that debate for five seconds and it's the, the contrast is just so obvious. I mean, even even an average IQ person could see the difference. Even even people that support them are saying that guy's an idiot, you know. So yeah, um, yes, yeah, so that was rough. Well, the funny thing is too, like I, I guess I'm sure you probably heard about this that TRS is also hosted, like their domain is also hosted by Epic. Did you yeah. know that? Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like get fucking real, man. It's it's so retarded. I mean, there's just uh, yeah, there's just no talking to those people. It, it, but it is fun. It's fun. it's fun to do every now and again. They're like like a, they're like the like uh, you know a little like crane machine game on the outside of a store. You know, and you put like a you know like you're like ah, I shouldn't do this. It's a fucking waste of money. But you know you put the dollar in and you're like well maybe I'll get something good out of it. You know, and it's like that's what yeah. they are. They're just a little side show attraction. Guilty pleasure, yeah. Slap them around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Slap them around in a debate, and it's well you know I know I was saying this on the stream, but it's like. It's so funny that they're the trolls and we trolled them. Like, how stupid <laughs> do you have to be to be Dingo or Ranvot and to actually get mad on the stream? Like, I think you kind of forfeited, like, your main objective. Like, if you're, a, if you're one of these, like, nobody trolls, like, neither of those guys have a following. And I don't even think they're doxxed. I think Dingo's doxxed. But, like, there, there are much, for me to even be on the stream, like, I'm already kind of losing just by participating in the exchange. And like literally all they have to do is like not get mad. Like they don't yeah. have to do anything else other than just sort of smugly like sort of shit post on the stream and make me look bad just because I'm I'm like I'm um, e even giving it credibility by being on the stream. You know what I mean? And they couldn't even do that. Like I well, somehow me being the guy that's like institutional and doing these conferences and like networking and politics, like infinitely more famous than like random people on the internet. Somehow I wind up being like the shit posting troll and they're crying, screaming like, no, 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 you're a faggot. And here's why. No, no, listen, you just lied about that. I, no, no, don't call me an idiot. Don't, you know, it's like, it's, it's like so bad. Like, it's incomprehensibly bad. <laughs> Their performance is like impossibly bad on that stream. Like I can't get over that. How are you, you know, you're ran bot. You're literally like an Australian potty mouth, like, you know, wig nat, shock jock or whatever. And you get on the stream and start fucking rage crying. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he was like, 
And then Brittany muted him because you told her to. And then he's like in the little private chat, like sitting there. I don't know if you could see it. And he's like, unmute me right now. Unmute me. Like he's just sitting there seething in the text chat. Like, the, like for like 40 minutes, like nonstop. It was like, no, like he's in that private chat. It's like, you're just going to let this fucking spick sit here and talk for 40 minutes, mate. Are you fucking serious, mate? And she never unmuted him. He just fucking oh left. My God. Like he's like, like all caps just sitting there fucking raging, dude. So bad. Well, I love how like I literally just bullied Brittany into mute him. <laughs> that was so ridiculous. I'm just like Brittany, mute him right, mute him right now, mute, Yo, him, mute right him right now. now. And she was like, okay. And she was just like, yes, sir. Okay, I'll just mute him forever. <laughs> yes, Mr. Fuentes, I'll mute him forever. Like, that has got to be so enraging to them that, like, I come on there. <laughs> so I just fucking stomp on him. Uh, yeah, I, you got to love that. That's so that's why we're, um, because I told, because it would be so much, it would make a lot more sense. It would be like the PR move to be like, pretend they don't exist and like never say that like the jason miller shit when he wouldn't say gab or whatever mm -hmm. like oh the free speech offerings like it would be the total pr corporate move to be like oh who is red but i don't even know who that is and, like never go on a stream like that but instead i go in and just like don't britney mute him excuse me <laughs> east celebrity is talking like yeah that's that's why we're that's why we're the best. I came from the streets. You know, they forget that. I was on blood sports. You know, they think they're mm -hmm. talking to one of these like DC metrosexual faggots who has never been on a fucking, you know, Zoom debate, has never been on an internet blood sports debate. It's like, don't you remember that's like sort of where I came from? Like I was a nobody on Twitter, just like you. And now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the same guy, but just, you know, a little more influential. And these guys are like, Oh, so here's the game plan. He's going to get in and we're going to say the cat boy thing and faggot and like, oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> Fuck you, Brittany, unmute me. Like literally rage <laughs> crying, especially that Norman guy. He literally was crying. <laughs> Dude, have you ever seen what he looks like? He no, looks, what does he, he look like? A fucking, like he looks like a fucking, I swear he looks Jewish. He looks like the most Jewish looking person. And I, I'm not even trying to say that as like an accusation. I mean, like. This guy looks 100% Israeli. Like, I, it's, like, unbelievable that this guy's a fucking wignat, man. It's it's incredible. Like, he's got the curly hair, the nose, everything, man. I'm like, this guy's sitting here, like, calling me a hard K, and he looks like he's, like, he, lo he literally looks like he just put a fucking prayer roll on the wall, man. Like, it's unreal. It just sucks so hard. Like, they're just, who, who wants to join them? It's literally just, like, the loser brigade. I, like... There's nothing attractive about that. It's, mm. it's the same thing with like the GOP. Like a big problem with the GOP is just like, you know, in, in mainstream culture, when people think Republican, they're like, ew, you know, ew, Republican. What, like your dad, like your, like your boomer dad, you know? And that's the same thing with Wignats. Like there's no, there's nothing attractive about that group of people. Like they're, they're not charismatic. They're not funny. They're not talented. They're not good looking. Like, it's just this sorry, sad, like, group of people. It actually is unironically kind of sad when you think about it. Like, yeah. I mean, if, if they didn't, like, obsessively hate me, you would, you would almost, like, feel bad for them because it's just... But then they should just give up, okay? Like, just, just stop what you're doing and go away. Like, just... You don't have to be that. You don't... You know, you don't have to be in a... Like, you, you could just be a loser in your hometown. You don't have to get together with all the other losers and just, like, fling shit at everybody. Well, I guess that's the appeal, and then everyone hates you, and then at least I guess you got something going for you. So I, <laughs> maybe that's why they do. Actually, I mean that's <laughs> that's why I did. I mean, let's be real. That's how I got started. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm just better at it than them. That's the only issue. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I I agree with you. They are like a very like pitiable group of people but it, yeah they just they're so fucking nasty and vile and you, you know so like i mean really i wouldn't even say autistic because that'd be almost a compliment they're just like angry that's it's what it all that it is it's all the time it's just like pure anger that's all you know there's no joy in it anything you look at their posts i'm like gab you listen to them like rand and, and dingo they're just sitting there screaming the whole time because they're just mad and they don't know how to control it. And I think that's a that's it's just so feminine too. Like you're not able to like control your fucking emotions for five minutes to have a conversation with somebody. Like, get fucking real.
Yeah, it just sucks. And like, even when they reply to our posts, it's just disgusting stuff, you know, like the, the, oh, everything man. is so like vulgar and scatological. It's all this like disgusting sex stuff. Like at what point, like obviously we attack people if they're degenerate or whatever, but at what point are you like worse than the alleged offender? Because everything out of your mouth is like so scatological and like vulgar you know, like the stuff that they post and say, it's like an attempt to call me gay or whatever. They literally create gay porn. It's yeah. like I did a stream with a friend of mine and then they like edit both of our faces. They look up gay porn and then like edit my face onto it. Yeah. And they're like, Haha, see, you're the gay one. It's like, <laughs> what the f- like at what point are you the deranged one? You know, yeah. I mean? it's like, because now it'd be one thing if like, It'd be one thing if I was doing that and that existed out there, like with Jack Murphy, and it's like, yeah. this is gross, but hey, like, you got to face the music. This is what you're up to. But it's like, I hung out with a guy, and like, in an attempt to make that look more whatever than it is, they're like, let me just Google gay porn real quick and copy paste your face on it, and then post that like in public where everyone can see it at that point it's like okay so actually i think there's something wrong with you <laughs> like you would go you would go on a wignat gab account and like their whole account is like gay porn like their yeah. whole account all the comments and all posts are talking about like sucking and fucking and like just disgusting <laughs> shit and yeah. it's like no 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 we're saying that about the other side. I have to talk like this. I have to post this stuff because, like, we're calling them that. So, it, like, it makes them look bad. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, like, if you say so, who would see that online and be like, this is great content. I'm following this guy. I want to see more of this. Like, it's, just, it's insane. Yeah, I don't get it, man. It's like the, it's like they're calling you gay while they have, like, folders of gay porn saved on their computer. You know, and like, and like the, the logic loop does not track for me. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I literally do not, do not get it. Um, they, cause they do that shit to me too all the time. It's like, uh, yeah, they're like, uh, or like this thing now they're like, oh, your wife left you for a black guy and you're, he's, she's, she's sucking black guy cock right now. What do you think about that? And I'm like, that's, I mean, first off, what the fuck are you talking about? And second off, like, I, why are you thinking about that? Like, it's so fucking weird to me. Yeah, the projection, I mean, like, people definitely overuse that word, but there's definitely something, like, to that. There's definitely something going on there, you know? It's cum like, brain, man. It's all that it is. They have cum brain. Yeah, big time. That's so cack. Yeah, well... It's a total Groiper. This whole year has just been like a cascading series of Groiper victories, just like one after the other after the other. Like un- even they, even they must admit. Like I don't think anybody would watch that debate and be like, "Oh, this is a great look." If anything, you just proved what lo- like you literally have these two guys with nothing to lose and the two most out there, whatever. And like they got trolled in the crying like they and it started out like five against one and they got bullied so hard like that they rage quit. These were guys with nothing to lose. And yet they lost. You know? like I came on it with like credibility on the line or whatever. And um, and like didn't even need to like I could have ignored that and it wouldn't have even been a big deal. But like I went on there and risk my credibility honestly for like literally no reason and nothing in like a very stupid way and and still just like decisively humiliated two people that like are low cows like decisively humiliated two internet shock jock trolls they're strong soldiers too. coming into it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know what 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 is the argument that like that should go on so it's such a total gripe or w Oh yeah, it was great, man. And uh, well, what's funny too is like there was literally like everyone like there, you know Dingo was like complaining to go. It's like four on one. I was like, dude, there was like two other wingnets in there, and they just weren't talking because they were so utterly destroyed at that point. You know, like there was like like that fucking handsome truth guy, that Norvin guy was in there, and there was some other random like homo in there too. He just didn't say. He was hung out the whole time, just didn't say anything because he was just fucking crushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh... The handsome truth one, that was hilarious because the guy gets in there and it's like, it's these people are just like ridiculous with like no self-awareness. This is a guy that like I said this the other day, but it's just still funny. 
he literally drives around in a white van with like a swastika on it and then <laughs> spinning, like that's just what he does oh hey kai's in here a word of people and uh oh in the chat no he's in the lobby you want me to pull him in oh yeah bring him in bring him in what's up kai hey hey what's Hello? up guys what's up man hey you watching the stream I was just a minute ago. Yeah, the Beardson, you've tapped into the new algorithm, the middle of the night, thousand viewer live streams. I, dude, yeah, I don't know what the hell's happened tonight, man. I literally couldn't even start making content till like 30 minutes ago because people wouldn't stop donating. It's an untapped so. market. Yeah. Untapped the, the sleepless groiper market. Yeah. I mean, hey, I pal. Know. Yeah, we were talking about your incel phobia. <laughs> the incel phobia well i heard you guys yeah. talking about the uh the other guys too the wig nats i just want to add my two cents like they all they literally oh, don't change the cry subject out now. Don't change as the subject. they strike you oh you guys yeah, see, that? I'm see, here. That? No. You see that real quick all right well it will address the uh the elephant in the room the incel the, in the i'm gonna get the, the incel in the gaming plan. chair we'll address him <laughs> Yeah, yeah so what's the, what's the story here? You uh, you go on, you are here, and you say, oh, well, if we take the incel bit too far, we're going to be just as bad as the roasties. And it's like, eh, okay. And you go on the stream the other day, and you say, oh, well, if you're doing a bit, you're not a real incel, because incels don't do bits, and you shouldn't want to be a real incel. And you know and such and such other things so so what's going on pal i mean clearly there's there's uh this anti-incel streak that you've got going on here i don't think so i don't think so i think um actually unless what you've said has kind of changed I, I thought our positions were pretty similar uh, hmm. that is unless unless you think that you know people should want to be incels but i think that's kind of the problem is that a lot of people who aren't incels um start like picking up the label because they're like oh this is like fun this is whatnot when i think you know incels have been punished by society you know a few millimeters of bone and society and women they want nothing to do with them um and i, I elaborated a little bit there is nuance to the take i think in your position and i actually said this on the show in a position like yours where you're the head of a movement being an incel is actually an, un, an unspoken virtue because you're removing yourself or, or rather you have been removed involuntarily from the conflict and from the subversion that goes along with you know relationships and with you know the the drama that goes around that um but i think you know we shouldn't say that uh to be an incel is something to be aspired to because like we know you can't choose to be an incel it betrays the very definition of being an incel and also, uh, I didn't, it would I didn't get, choose this life. That's for sure. Uh -huh. it, yeah, right. Okay. And, <laughs> and it uh, it would it would definitely get in the way of what the motive should be, which is to fulfill God's commandment to multiply and replenish the earth. So that's my take on it, basically. Well, hang on, hang on. I mean, but you said on you are here. You said like, well, we risk being just as miserable as the people are criticizing. Do you think that you need um, to be married me, to a woman to be happy? Well, let me let me uh, answer that. Answer that again. Answer that. Well, I, I don't know how I said it. I want to. I, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. But I want to okay. hear how I said it so I can I'm properly assess. I don't know if that's a rhetorical characterization or if those are my words because I don't recall saying it like that. But I may have. So um, here, hold on. I think I've actually people have time stamped it. I think. Yeah, isolate the clip. Isolate the clip. I mean, yeah. Kai, Kai, is it not enough that people have timestamped the clip for you to be like, hey, maybe, you know what, maybe, uh, because they should, they certainly aren't timestamping the fucking 30 minute long Harambe joke. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> brutal. Absolutely brutal. Heck. All right. Hold on. Oh, okay. I think I found it. Hold on. Yeah, one, one of the things I did push back on, and I'll, I'll fight this to a T, I do see this from uh, some of even my favorite people, some of my favorite people, like, um, I'm trying to think, maybe it's Harris Walker. Uh, but I, I, you don't know, I don't really like the, uh, the talking point of like, you know, um, I hate women so much that like when I have a wife, I'm going to like hate having sex with her. <laughs> like, I don't, 
I don't know. I, I can't get on board with that. I just, I don't get that, man. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe my, my testosterone's too high. Maybe the, the perception of relationships, or rather of, you know, the marital occasion for intercourse, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's still romanticized in my mind, but, um, I just, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that talking point. Oh, you, you love enjoying, wow, congratulations, the sex enjoyer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I have never had sex. I have never had sex. Well, then how, can, how can you sit there and counter signal him then? Because maybe you'll hate it too and you'll feel the exact same way. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe that's true. But I think um, I think there, there's a, a pleasure. Um, there's a uh, loveliness associated with, you know, physical intimacy with a partner who you are married to, who you've ma had made vows to, this who you've been gay. wedded by God within a church and, uh, and are linked to forever. I think there's a beauty in that. And the reason God gay. makes sex pleasurable, um, is because it is ultimately something that should be done in the right context. And when done so is incredibly beautiful. And I, obviously the satanic hijacking of that is like, oh, this pleasure needs to be done at all times with masturbation, pornography, prostitutes, like having sex with whoever. And that's the lie. But I think that God does make the act of procreation enjoyable because it's something very beautiful. But I see, I think that what people are trying to get at here, and this is the issue, is we're trying to suss out and provoke what's going on with women and sex and all of this. And and so, like, this is a good example where you've got, what is it, Harris Walker, or, you know, Zoomer Theosis or whatever, who say, like, I hate women so much, I won't enjoy sex. Do you think, like, we really need people logging on to say, actually, I'm going to enjoy sex and I'm just so high test, I'm actually going to enjoy sex with my wife. It's like, I think it's sort of missing the point. And same deal with, you know, as far as the incel thing is concerned, we've got a matriarchal, the woman dominated society, which is ruining everything. And to say incel, and even like why I grew out this mustache is a good example. I look better without this mustache. I think it actually even looks kind of silly. And I know that like- I disagree it, with that. I think the mustache is optical. I'm a, I'm a mustache okay. supporter. Well, thanks, I, I like it. But the point is like, I'm I, this is a revolutionary act because in a society where everybody is grooming themselves and you know manicuring themselves to look better for women and to appeal to women, I'm doing something where it's, you know, maybe some people like it, maybe some people don't, but it's like, fuck you. I'm going to do something that maybe it worsens my appearance because I'm not controlled by the expectations and the desires of women in the society. And, and that's sort so of true. like what the incel, the incel thing is really about involuntarily, meaning women don't desire. And like that, that's sort of the point. It's like we're, we're embracing the fact that our actions aren't dictated by what's desirable for women. Like, and, and that's, that's really where I come at it when I say, oh, incel, incel, incel. It's, and I'm owning it. I'm taking it back. I'm appropriating it. They're saying women don't want to fuck you because you're a loser. I'm saying women don't want to fuck me because I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> because I don't care what women want. I don't care what women want. I don't care what women find pleasurable. I care about what matters. I care about what I care about. And this is sort of like a man asserting himself, you know, because people have conflated this thing where they say like, oh, uh, you know, the highest status male is a real ladies man, the man that has the things that women like. And I'm <laughs> sort of inverting this. Yeah. And I'm saying, um, no, no, fuck that, actually, because mm. now you've got all these guys that are, you know, bending over backwards to make themselves pleasing to women and, and meet mm. their sort of arbitrary expectations. And I'm saying, no, maybe maybe I'm OK being perceived like by Young Turks and by um, Ethan Klein and all them as like a low status weirdo who's like psycho. And like, you know, they write these articles, even his mom's afraid of him and shit like that. It's like I'm owning it because you know, if I even cared one iota about the voluntary sex, I wouldn't be doing this. So that mm -hmm. that's where it comes from.
Yeah, no, um, I, I, I think, again, you and I agree a lot more on this than the masses have uh, convinced. And and that's why I think this is, honestly, I believe it's a very manufactured issue. It's, uh, it's manufactured content, because I agree with so much of that. I, I say it all the time, like you've, you've heard me say this before, one of the copes that tall people come up with, and actually the one I hear most often is not, oh, I could reach things that are higher. Oh, you know, powerful men throughout history have been tall. We hear just, well, women like men who are taller. So I 100% agree that men need to reorient their value system not to be around women, so but true. just to be around things that are good and uh, and will make you, like you said, a winner. And another thing, Manless I are better. am 100 I'm 100% with you in, in the sentiment of like doing things just because, you know, they make you a winner and because they're cool or whatever, even if women don't like it. I do this with like the way I dress a lot of the time. There were a, there were people who came up to me and they're like, yeah, you know, a lot of these women at like the America Fest event were like, Kai would be so hot if he didn't wear all these like really cringy suits. Cause I wear like that 70s suit with like the, the you know, I forget what it is. It's like a, a suede almost on the breasts. And you know, people like T.R. Sartre, they're like, yo, that, that suit is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, it's like very 70s. And I don't care that women don't like it. I wear it because I think it looks cool. It's identifiable. Um, there's a bit of like, you know, aesthetic nostalgia within it. And I just think it's fun. It's something I enjoy. I had it tailored, you know, it's something I take care of. So I'm right there with you, man. I'm not the one saying like, you need to change everything you do to adhere to women. And the people who are blowing it up to seem that way, I think are really just, manufacturing a crisis where it doesn't exist but fundamentally well, my perspectives I, on like relationships and sex just coincide with that of the bible with that of god i do think it is important to strike up wholesome relationships i don't think you need to sacrifice yourself to do so i think there is a valuable statement to be made in doing things expressly because women don't like them but i think ultimately we do need to multiply and replenish the earth i don't think I, there's anything wrong in that i need to entertain interject here so who's the shirtless lifting TikToks. For. You think I do that for women? You think I do that for women? So you do, are you doing it for men then? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, not for men's pleasure, not for their attraction, but because there is a niche community of lifters who admire the perfection of the physical form. Not like, oh, bro, you're so sexy looking. That's what gay people do. Um, weightlifting and the perfection of your form, the idea of crafting a physique, is not gay. And I think anybody who pulls that out. Is is being a little bit subversive. I mean, of course, I think it's a I'm little not gay. the most. I think it's well, a little it's, gay. I'm well, sorry. Hang enough, hang but on. you're we're derailing a little bit. Let's let's I um we could get into that. But let me just explore this a little bit. Um, I mean, by the way, well, hold on, hold on. This is important to step in. Oh, Beardson's oh, gonna say. On. Beardson's gonna say that I'm the one with Excuse the misogynist me. or with Excuse the. Uh, with the woman, with the woman uh, forward you lifting account, my lifting account literally has a video where I'm expressing that I'm a misogynist, expressing that I have a low body count, which is zero, by the way. Uh, I express that publicly on the same account, which supposedly is trying to capture the interest of women following the beards and training. Excuse thought. me. So let me, let's just, let's, let's restore a little bit here to the old conversation. But the problem is you said in the stream, you said like, well, if we get too into this incel stuff, then we can't get married. We can't get married. And and it doesn't that kind of challenge and undermine everything you just said, which is like, well, well, I my position coincides with yours because I think that men should do things because they're good. But at the same time, you're saying, well, but if we get too incel, mm, well, then women are going to like that. And then we can't get married and we got to get married. And I'm saying married, not married, damn the consequences. Let us do what is in cell. Let us do what is right. You know, I may get married. I may not. I'm equally okay with either outcome. What I'm focused on is being creative. What I'm focused on is being a righteous political revolutionary. And so, so you, and you keep, you do these weaselly little deals where you go, well, my position is just that of the Bible. Oh, well, who could fucking disagree with the Bible? Uh, I think you're, <laughs> no, you're, no, you're you? extrapolating you? a little bit from the Bible, actually. What part? What part's extrapolated? When you say this stuff about like, um, you know, well, well, you say be fruitful and multiply. Okay. But you know, it also says in the Bible, actually, if I'm not mistaken, that it's better if you don't get married. I'm pretty sure it says that in St. Paul. Where does it say that? Where does it say St. Paul. What part? 
because I can I can pull up I can pull up the commandment from God where He tells us to do that in Genesis. So it, you know if you can pull up the, the verse in Paul, but I know you're a Mormon, but in the Catholic tradition, the holiest people and the ecclesiastical authority are not married. The Pope's not married. The priests aren't married. The bishops aren't married. They're not married. They're not having kids. And you know, people okay. you know, quickly say, oh, well, they're pedophiles, they're gay, or whatever. No, I don't think that's it's the like, case. You okay, know I well, don't think that's the case. Well, I know, but some, you know, I'm saying that to address, you know, a knee-jerk response yeah, from some it. people. But the point being is, you know, I think we also have to point out there's this theological divide, too, where in your religion, there's this thing where you have to get married and you have to have kids. Catholics don't have that. I mean, of course, we think that Wait. marriage is good. It's a sacrament. I didn't say, but, but it's not a moral imperative like it is for the Mormons. Um, I would agree that Mormons hold the idea of marriage and having children to maybe a higher esteem, or we make it a more fundamental part of our theology and of our canon than the Catholic Church does. But from my understanding, um, also people Here, in the chat are saying 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 7. 7. Yeah. Which one? 7 11? Now, or which verse now to it? the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So the point I'm trying to make, I'm not a theologian, but the point I'm trying to make is you say this stuff about, oh, well, you know, my position is just the Bible. It's like, well, you're a Mormon, number one. And no, I don't mean to say that in a disrespectful way, but I we can't. don't have the same religion. And, no, but um, we both believe in the Bible and the commandments of God that are stored within it. Certainly, but of course, the interpretation of those things is really the question. It's really the crux. So for you to say, okay, well, but I don't think we have a different Bible. interpretation of God's commandment here. Okay, well, Saint Paul in uh, or in First Corinthians seven, it says that it's better to remain unmarried. So what are we? Do you to, think that overrides God's commandment to well, multiply and replenish the earth? I, I it think it's very clear scripture? to say. I think if God gives you a commandment and St. Paul has a that, personal though? has a personal opinion, which, by the way, I would argue is a good opinion. It's a valiant mm. opinion and one that should be valued. Within is the it church, inspired within the or is it not? I think it's inspired. And I think what's even more inspired is a direct it's commandment from God. I think, I think a direct commandment of God would, would overrule um, a statement made by a saint any day of the week. I would be surprised when did God if you disagree say that? with that. When did God say that? Go in Genesis. Hebrews Here, hold on. In Genesis, so in the beginning of the earth, you mean? Yes. Yes. In like the most important part of our existence, the point where we became to exist. Yeah, so in other words, before civilization, before the new covenant. Bro, bro, no, Jesus, no, no, dude, 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 dude. That's that, being, that train of logic. Out. That train of logic is dangerous. The before the new covenant, don't okay, okay. So. People bring don't that up about so. Leviticus all the time, but you know it's not true. No, that, not everything that exists within saying. the Old Testament. That's not what I'm saying. Well, then what are you saying? Are you saying that that commandment in Genesis is irrelevant? That's not what I'm saying. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is that you're you're taking God's commandment to the land of Israel to mean that, you know, we've all got to go out there and make it our our it's our moral obligation to go out and get married and have kids. And then therefore, therefore, if that's the overriding moral imperative, then we can't be incels and we can't become too incel. And that's biblical. And that's where I say I didn't say you can't be incel. Right you're you're well, you're you putting did, words in my did. mouth. I didn't that's, say that. You said I we can't be that. too incel. You said we can't well we can't get too in whatever you said. We can't get too into that bit. We can't get too into the this or the that or else, you know, we can't fulfill God's commandment. So you're saying it's like God's commanding us not to be incels. I mean that's no, that no, 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 QED. No how the logic proceeds from your point that's, of view. And here I am I'm saying, that. saying, let's look at the uh, Corinthians and it says it's better to be unmarried. And you're saying, well, that's an opinion. I would say that's kind of a dangerous line. Oh, it's all just opinions. The apostles just have their opinions. That's probably why you're a Mormon and not a Catholic. No, you think no, no. Like I said, like, like I said, like I said, the, uh, the words from the apostles and, and, no, I'll, I'll just say may, maybe it was overlooked, but I think the words of the apostles are very crucial and important. There's a reason we believe in the Bible as well as the Book of Mormon. We don't believe in the Book of Mormon over the Bible. We believe it is another testament of Jesus Christ with, by the way, very similar um, commentary about relationships and women and, uh, and whatnot. But um, 
look, so so I think it's very clear. I don't think anybody can argue that within, and I don't know what, what version of the Bible you read from, but this is within Genesis. This is chapter 1, verse 28, where he does not just command Israel, but commands mankind, man as it exists, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. None of that, you would argue, like the, the part about having dominion over the earth, none of that's overwritten because it's, you know, it's, it's pre-atonement. None of that's overwritten. All of it stands as a commandment to us. The same way that the moral law that exists about homosexuality and adultery is also not overwritten through the atonement. I mean that's that's very clear. I'm not um, saying it's overridden by these, but I didn't say that it's overridden. But you're by but you're these saying comments. that we should that we should kind of value uh, the and, chat, and I think we do value the I'm words gonna, of Saint Paul, and I think it's crucial too. But you're saying that that would hold a precedent over the commandment of God in Genesis, which I, I don't say, think is the no, case. No, 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 no. I didn't say it holds precedent. I just said that your, for lack of a better word, you're oversimplifying the issue. You're saying, well. My position is a biblical position because of this chapter in Genesis. And it's like, okay, well, here's this chapter in Corinthians. Here's this chapter in Matthew. Here's, here's these okay. uh, then, things then where over, it's a little bit less clear. Little then with, with, all of, with all of the references, um, with all of the references, which do you think takes the most precedent? If we were to have the words of a saint and the words of God himself commanding to man as, as he exists, which would you take as precedent? Well, how about Jesus... Matthew nineteen twelve, for there are eunuchs who were born that way, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, the one who can accept this should accept it. The point is, it's not really up to us to decide. We've got all these passages in scripture, and you're saying like, well, I'm gonna, I decide, but and that's subjective, is it not? I subjectively, I mean, you I could don't say, think well. So. Hang on, you could say, well, God said this one, so that means it takes precedent. You're making this sort of subjective decision about, you know, which thing you're going to follow, which how, how this is supposed to be interpreted, and <laughs> you're just some lay guy. You're not a priest, you're not a bishop, you're not an apostle, you don't have apostolic succession. Um, and, and, and what's more, whatever, you have your subjective interpretation, but you're using that to say, well, the, the biblical view on incels is let's not get carried away because God said, be fruitful and multiply. What do you not want to be fruitful and multiply because you're an incel? It's like, well, yeah, but maybe I'm living like a eunuch. Maybe it being an incel is living like a eunuch for the mm -hmm. sake of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, so that's quite biblical as well. Is it yeah. Not? So, so there's a few things. And I just want to be very clear. None of what I've said has been like a disavowal of, you know, the eunuchs, which it says in the verse, Matthew 19, 12, which have made themselves eunuchs. And the second part's more important for the kingdom of heaven's sake, not because, you know, we're, we're putting it up to women, but for the kingdom of heaven's sake. So this is like monks and people who put themselves in positions to be abstinent for the rest of their lives to be celibate. I'm not disavowing that. I'm not counter signaling like monks and whatnot. I would never do that. I think uh, abstaining from, you know, like sexual pleasure and devoting yourself to a life of Christ, I think that's based. But I also don't think that's the, the dichotomy that we're like striking up here. I don't think it's, well, we can be incel and like devote our entire lives to Christ. It's like, oh, if that was the dichotomy, then I'm like, oh, I'm 100% with you. You want to live as a monk? You want to live as a eunuch and devote yourself to, you know, what it says for the kingdom of heaven's sake? I think that's awesome. And I wouldn't disavow that. And if anybody claims I'm disavowing that, they're entirely incorrect. But we've got large things on our hands. God commands us to multiply and replenish the earth. And although, you know, we have, you know, Paul's words within, which says, you know, if you're unmarried, you know, better to be unmarried. We can look through all of that and still affirm that there is an imperative to multiply and replenish the earth. Even outside of the religious, there is a, a uh, yeah, civilizational this, uh, and a demographic a problem here. Hang on, now. let me switch. I think... Well, I guess, what's your take on the demographic imp imperative? Yeah, I agree there's a demographic imperative, but I, I guess the fundamental problem that I'm getting at is this. It's like this, it's this compromise shit where it's like, um, and it's it's almost like this, uh, we used to call it cooning, this, um, you know, well, we when you say we can't get carried away with inseldom because then we can't get married and stuff, it's 
you know, what's, what's, it's almost like there's always something stopping us. Like, you know, with me, and, you know, would you say that the things that I say are too in self for me to, and you know, maybe that's a bad question because it's personal, but it's like, hello, can you hear me by the way? Am yeah, I, I can hear you. I switched on my audio. Okay. Mm. So, um, it's like, I don't, I don't think that in these times where as big moral decisions have to be made, w- like whether or not women are going to like it should ever factor in as a consequence. We have to do the right thing. We have to be true to ourselves. I don't think you have to be a monk to be living for the sake of the kingdom of heaven necessarily. <clears throat> but it's but you, well, hold on, hold on. But in Matthew content. nineteen twelve, like that's what it was referring to. Like mm, you have to no, admit, it contextually, you don't think Matthew nineteen twelve, which refers to eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake, you think he's referring to like the incels like within our movement, or do you think he's referring to you know monks and people who have literally castrated themselves in order to abstain from sexual pleasure? It's, it says living like it says if they choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, and you think well, the which translation way, are you reading? NIV. Okay, well I'm reading the KJV. I'm reading the KJV, which says, which KJV have made themselves eunuchs. Bro. The KJ, bruh, bruh. All right. Well, I'm not going to make this into the into the definitional debate, but I'm a KJV onlyist. I think, but um, I think you're introducing. I think you're introducing once again your own interpretation. Which, like, would you say that? Would you say that the this this part of the bible is precludes people from living for in other words for the sake of their conscience oh no it's strictly talking about living in a monastic priestly order castrated would you say that to to interpret it as people living consistently with their conscience and not getting married oh no they didn't mean that no you have to get married and have kids I think that's such a silly sort of distinction that you're that you are introducing into the conversation. I don't know that it explicitly says, no, no, you have to live in a monastic order. You're introducing all these qualifications that aren't there. And the point, again, the point remains the same. You're saying, like, unless you cut your balls off and become a monk like a eunuch, um, then you can't take it too far with this incel stuff or that's else you're not, not what I'm saying. That's kind of what it sounds what like. Saying. Kind of what it sounds what like. What I'm saying is that contextually it's different. Again, I don't have something against people saying, you know, like, you know, I'm going to, you know, live for Christ and I'm going to abstain from, you know, relationships with women and whatnot. I think there's really logical, religious and virtuous ways of going about getting there. But again, we need to be affirming the imperatives of the situation. I will agree that I have a different theological position because uh, marriage and the creation of families is of particular necessity and is of particular value Um, and is is put in a particular place within my church. I don't think that's a problem. I think my church is better because of that, and I think the fruits of that doctrine are a good fruit, which is why, you know, Mormons have more kids. Uh, We are, uh, like I say all the time, literally us and the Amish are going to be the ones saving the white race. So, uh, but no, but, but that gets to the point, though, about demographics. I mean... I, I am not even saying that the logic to get to where you're going about, you know, why well, have these, you know, issues with, you know, how the matriarchal, uh, matriarchal society is set up. I'm not even disagreeing with the way you're getting there. And I don't even think it's of a particular, you know, like, like negative, uh, I don't know, pattern of thought or of, of argumentation. But there is also an imperative, which is demographics. And I think that if we don't make it a priority, because this is what it should be. I think it should be a priority. It should be a priority to not only multiply and replenish the earth, which we can say has more, you know, religious angles to me than to you, but rather as also just white people, I think it is an imperative that we boost our birth rates. And I think that as much as your logic getting to the point of being an incel or the apologetics for inceldom, as much as I agree with those, I think if you're positioning yourself out or against having a relationship, not saying you need to like, you know, completely cuck to be in one, but just that people are positioning themselves against having relationships. I think that is 
unproductive and goes against what one of our goals should be, which is to multiply and replenish the earth. I'm not saying there can be no incels. I'm just saying that if everybody's an incel, we're going to die out even quicker than we are now. And I'm not saying that everybody's an incel just because they were mean to women. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that I uh, am wary of the complete aversion to relationships which are wholesome and will end in uh, having more children. Yeah, I think it's gay to say something is like, it's unproductive to say something like we have to have conversations, you know, so even if it's um, provocative or the merits of it are is dubious, I think it's productive to, to provoke conversations. I'll just say, you know, it's unproductive to say that, you know, we should be averse to relationships. Well, why the fuck not? I mean, I, I think it's actually a valid point. Um, you know, and, and we're debating the merits of it right now. No, I, I just said while. that. I agree with the yeah. argumentation. I just agreed with you. Oh. I agree with your argumentation. I agree with your reasoning for it. I agree with your opposition to the matriarchal society. I agree you should do things because... Well, hang on, let me finish. Now you're just, okay. you're just answering easy questions. No, no, no. But like, these are I things agree. that I agree hang on, with. Hang on. Let, me, let, me, let me get into this here. So here's the thing. I, I just find it very dubious that the the people that are against the incels what, what uh, maybe you don't see yourself that way but whatever um i find it dubious you know when you come up with these like what i think it is is rationalizations when you say things like well i'm following god's commandment to multiply or i'm doing it for that we could have more white babies i mean certainly that's like probably an ancillary reason certainly it's like those reasons are consistent with your views, but that that's sort of the issue is I don't think that, you know, a lot of people are doing these things for because they're political or moral objectives or imperatives. I think they're doing it because it's what they want. I and agree. That's what I'm getting at is they I agree. want to have a wife. They want to have kids and that's fine. Fine. Just, if you want to have a wife and have kids, I want to have kids. Um, but the, the point I'm getting at is we have to let go of what we want. And it, this is why I say I'm not against people. I, and I just said this earlier. I said, I'm taking this controversial line here and we're playing it out. Um, and I'm just sort of contributing something provocative into the, the marketplace of ideas. I think people should get married and have kids, but I think it's also important to let go of what we want and be okay with not having what we want necessarily. And and too often, and this is, this is where you say, oh, well, it's unproductive to say that people should not have kids or be averse to, to wholesome relationships. I think actually the problem, you know, maybe that's a problem, but the bigger problem is people that are, that are getting sucked into things because it's what they want. Uh, what, do you, what do you think my opinion of those people are? Well, I don't know, my friend. I think there's a bit of a conflict of interest because, uh, you know, I think that's definitely something you want. And, you know, when you want something, you have a tendency to rationalize it and you come up with lots of reasons. And, you, you know, it goes from the Bible says to, well, what about demographics to this to that? And um, it sounds like intellectualizing a sort of base impulse, which we all have, which we all feel. Which why, do you, I, why do you think we have that impulse? Well, of course, it's very obvious because, uh, you know, you know, we're supposed to have kids and everything. Okay, um, that's like my argument. And I'm not denying yeah, no, that there can be poor again. rationalizations for it. Like you're trying to say that, like, I, I guess it, it almost sounds like you're trying to give me this position I've never agreed to, which is like, I think that men should do whatever they can to get into relationships with women. And I think they should allow themselves to be whipped and to become the slaves of, you know, the matriarchy. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, I speak out against that. I, like I brought up in the example, I don't personally live that way. I'm not whipped. Uh, I don't have these kind of perspectives and I rail against them on my show. Um, and I think that's why there's a lot of this manufactured crisis because people literally just don't listen to the nuance of it. So you and I agree on this, but you also mm -hmm. outline my we argument, don't. which is we, we have a natural instinct well, hang on. for no, a but reason to have children. That's wrong. Yes. And, and no one's disagreeing with that. Um, but it's just like, you know, people want to have food right and people have an appetite for food why because we're supposed to eat and people want to drink water why because we're supposed to drink water but then why do we fast during lent 
And, you know, why did Jesus say that you should take care of your spiritual hunger before you take care of your hunger for food? I mean, the point is, and, and that's what I'm getting at, is it's about in the wanting. Yes, you know, there's a biological impulse to breed and to eat and do all these things but but it needs to be done in the right context but the mm, not not even necessarily that it's about it's about in this instance and in this or in a normal time i would i would agree with you and i'd say yeah who cares but um but in this time in particular in this movement this it's a real problem here where people are they're going for what they want and then they turn into this rationalization and then i become the bad guy i become the anti-biblical oh he's anti-family oh he doesn't want people to have kids whatever i don't um, think because so, i'm right. out here well some people say that oh, because, I'm sure, I'm you're sure. not saying that but yeah. some people do and um and so and i'm the one saying we should we should be mortifying ourselves we should be putting and and again you know like i may have wife and kids i also may not but it's 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 not about what i want it's about doing what must be done and and for some people that is having a wife and kids but i feel like people aren't considering doing what must be done they're considering what they want and the, then they come in with this oh well uh, well what i want is consistent with some aspects of what must be done i don't think they care about what must be done actually very much at all and that's really the issue here and then when you say something like well, we can't go to incel because then we're not going to be able to find wives and get married. It's like, what does that lend itself to? When you say we can't go too far because then we won't be able to mate. I mean, again, does that lend itself more to um, an attitude of doing what must be done indifferent to the consequences, no matter the cost, no matter I, the mortification? Or is it I more think... like, well, we want to get married. We want, we want to be happy. You said we'd just be as miserable as the people we don't like. I'd be okay with being miserable my whole life. I'd be okay oh. with that. Oh, look, look, there's a few things. The first is that, um, I don't know, because uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go look through where I said it, but I, uh, if I did say it in that sense, that you're going to be miserable if you don't have a family, I don't think that's the case. There's plenty of people who lived, you know, chaste lives, who were abstinent, who I don't think were, you know, resigned to misery because of that. Um, the second thing about doing what's right and doing what's good versus just, you know, chasing the things you want to do. Um, I 100% agree with you again. Like I wish that people thought about, you know, procreation outside of just like, oh, I want to have sex and more so within, you know, the duty to either, you know, change things demographically or from the religious angle. Like we've talked about all this stuff. I wish people would think about it more soberly and with a more, um, you know, eternal perspective. But the other thing is, um, my aversion, or rather my, my conversation about, you know, getting too far along with the incel bit comes to the point where, like I, and this is what I brought up, this is what I said in the interview, which is why I'm, I want to clear up kind of the rhetorical characterization. I have the opposition to people who are saying stuff like, yeah, I, I don't even want to have sex with my wife. Like, that kind of talk is something I can't get on board with. The kind of stuff you're saying, which is like, oppose the matriarchy, do something that's good, um, you know, sacrifice a little bit, um, I'm 100% with that. But there is the flip side, which is literally just... Like I say, it's the overcommittal to the bit where you get to the point where it's like, yeah, I don't even want to have kids anymore. It's like, well, 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 hold on. Like you are saying, I do want to have kids. You're not sacrificing any part of yourself to say that. You're not, you know, ceding any ground to anybody by saying that, but you're stating that you do want to have kids. And I think that's a good thing. But there are people out there, the kind of people who I was referring to in the vit, in, into the interview, which say stuff like, I don't even want a wife and I don't want kids. And it's not because they're thinking about it very virtuously, I think it's more so because they think that it's a bit and they're taking it far. And that's the part that, uh, that, that I have an aversion to, but I don't think that's the part you represent. So I, I will just awesome. add one thing. It's, it's very contextual. I think the way you're doing these things is super contextual. Intimacy is reserved for marriages, which are smiled upon and sanctified by God in a church or in a temple. And that's when you can have sex for the purpose of procreation. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And also I would push back on like, well, people just want to have families or just want to have, you know, just want to have kids because they, they want to do it because they want to have sex. I mean, sure. I mean, listen to natural law, listen to natural order. These ideas brought about by Catholics, Aquinas and, uh, and Augustine 
They talk about the natural inclination to procreate as something written into us by God as part of natural law. The reason for that is because it is ultimately a good thing that God wants for us. And I think that you don't need, and, and by the way, I'm not asking people to sacrifice a part of you or stoop down to women, kiss their feet to get married to them. I've never said that. But I do think that there's a reason we have the natural inclination to procreate. And even old Catholic philosophers and saints and priests would agree with me on that take. I don't mean to subvert. I don't mean to do like a linguistic slip. I think that's the simple fact of it. And that's a fact that exists in both of our churches. Yeah, I just disagree because I think that if you look at the example of Jesus or the apostles or the saints, I think that, um, you know, the the holiness was really the preoccupation rather than the having a wife and kids. And I think there's a real theological okay, difference. Nick, about, hang Nick. on. Hey, you're interrupting me. You're interrupting me. It's very disrespectful. Yeah, I'm the moderator also, here. I didn't I interrupt Kai. You. Don't interrupt Kai. <laughs> and, I'm the uh, moderator here. So, yeah. So, um, so I think when you look at the example of the the all time greats, you know they're not people that were known for their being married and being fruitful and multiplying, but they're willing to sacrifice it all and be truly transcendent. I, I don't I don't think that uh, I mean fundamentally, marriage and sex is a carnal act, you know. And, Whoa. Um, it's true. It's true. It's um, and and I know that in the in the bounds of marriage and the binds of marriage, it's good and it leads to procreation and everything. But we're talking about the truly transcendent. We're talking about again the all time greats. We're thinking about people that are, you know, when, when we're talking about priests, bishops, talking about Jesus himself, not married, not married, didn't have kids. Um, and so I think there's just maybe this fundamental disconnect where there's this, this very worldly view about like, we've got to populate the world with people. And then, you know, I think there's people that are uh, truly, and in this case, we have to be martyrs. We have to be saints. We have to be sort of above that. And again, it's not, it's not that it's not a bit. I mean, that, I think that's the problem is it's, it's definitely not a bit. I mean, you look at what's going on in the world and to be averse to all of this, like, well, they're averse to the wholesome relationships or something. It's like, how could you not be averse to the whole spectacle of everything, you know? So I think um, I'm, I'm willing to take the so-called bit to its logical conclusion, which is to, like, be killed by the government for my views. Um, wife and kids be damned, you know, if, if that's in the cards for me or not. And that's the kind of seriousness that people have to bring to the table with this is a truly spiritual holy divine vigor and this stuff about you know again it, you could you could walk back what you said but you said well if we take this bit too far we can't find wives and we could just become as miserable i mean those were your words you could walk them back and say well i don't know if i said it but it's what you said you said we will become as miserable as they are it's like miserable miserable try you know sweating blood because you're about to be crucified okay, miserable dude. you know that's that's sort of um what do we're you, called to do so hey I, whoa, I, whoa, hey whoa, whoa, kai, whoa. kai Why come on kai if you interrupt one more time i'm gonna have to mute you until nick finishes his point here i hate to do it but it's a lot of interrupted <laughs> kai Thank you, moderator. I'm trying to be an unbiased moderator here, but I mean, it's and hard. It's not it's that an incel, it's, but it's not that serious. Okay, I mean, we're having just a friendly discussion, but um, you know, I have um, a revolutionary mentality, a revolutionary mindset, which is um, it's it's indifferent to these things. You know, if God blesses us with women and children, that's great, um, but. But we should be listening to God and not thinking about like, it's sort of this thing of like, well, my plans versus God's plans. It's like, well, I better watch what I say. Because you could say like, well, I'm not saying to kiss their feet. Yeah, you're just saying don't take the bit too far unless you like are not able to find a wife. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, probably with the things I've said, it's it's made it more difficult to find a wife. But you know what? I would do it again because... You know, I, I speak from my heart, from my conscience, and that's what's more important. And that's sort of what's called for in these times. And um, and the demographic thing is really just sort of besides the point. You know, we need people that are 
ultimately going to get in control of the regime. So we need we need radicals, we need fanatics, we need revolutionaries, and then they can dictate policy, and policy will dictate you know what the majority of people do, and that that is you know what's going to turn the tide on the demographic decline. But that I mean that's a wholly separate argument. So I mean to me it's just um, you know again I hear these things like we've got to make ourselves more amenable for marriage or women or whatever it's like no the goys got to be unleashed okay the boys and the goys got to be unleashed can't care what women think if if people are averse to relationships i think that's fine now you know probably most people and and i keep throwing in the caveat you know most people probably should be married and having kids i think that's probably what would make most people happy and that's probably what's in god's plan for most people i mean i don't want to speak for him but i mean certainly that's the case it's about it's about what it's about our approach and what we must be willing to do and sort of how we're orienting um, our view of our obligations, which is, uh, you know, we, we may have to do things that are not wholesome and not, not lovey dovey and mm, 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 we, yeah, we love each other and we're one flesh. And I mean, not, not to diminish that. I'm not trying to, you know, it's a sacred institution, of course, but, <clears throat> you know, but, but some really some fucked up stuff. And uh, to say, like, oh, well, we're just being fruitful and multiplying, it's sort of rationalizing, like, a very pleasing thing that a lot of people want and um you know i'm the guy standing here saying like no rejection reject the modern world reject all of this if it comes to you great but we gotta we have to reject the material world we have to take the bit too far and not care what these these women have to say about i mean there's a lot of stuff in the bible about about women you know i mean talking about wholesome relationships and stuff there's a lot of things in the bible uh, you know in proverbs about women and a lot of warnings so anyway so that's my that's my view on it okay yeah so so my thank thank you uh beardson <laughs> keeping it more orderly than any debate i've been in politically provoked just needs to hire you at this point because the moderation you know it's uh it's not subpar sometimes they're not, not sending I'm, their best i'm not sure they could afford me but yeah <laughs> but look the reason i i came to interject which admittedly was rude of me was because i think there was an there was an equally rude um characterization or not necessarily straw man, but it made it out to seem like I would have a problem with the abstinence that Christ showed, which is ludicrous. Nowhere in this conversation could and should anybody ever interpret that I would have a problem with Christ, the Son of God, Savior of mankind, the one who atoned for all of mankind's sins, abstaining from sex. Like, that is not a problem. To further that, I have no problem with any of the saints abstaining from sex either. So I think it's I think it's just ridiculous um, to, to bring that up as a point. And I don't think you did so in bad faith, but I did want to interject because I don't want it even to seem to anybody for a moment like i would have a problem with christ abstaining from a fleshly relationship um you kind of clarified it at the end but for a moment it did also sound like you were kind of you said you were not undermining it but it did seem almost like a simplification of the role of um or of, of the identity of marriage and of procreation within the right context. I don't think it's a carnal thing. I think marriage is literally ordained by God. I think it is a very serious thing. And I think that procreation is the most serious thing that's within it, right? Because procreation is the ability to create life. It is the creative power that mankind has. And that's what's so powerful about it. There's a reason the sin of murder is so powerful as well. It's because life is so important it is so intrinsically valuable and the creation of that life is equally valuable and it is important to do so in the right context and those contexts are i think much larger than just carnal which is why i talked about you know saint augustine and uh and Aquinas, who talk about the natural law and god even writing within us that drive to procreate so again like your final statement is literally my argument i have nothing wrong with people like you or saints or anybody like that saying we need to you know 
avoid this stuff and we are, you know, putting a stop to, to the matriarchal thinking and we're pushing against it. I'm not at all saying that. Like, I'm not, or I'm not at all saying that's a problem. Not in this entire conversation have I ever countered Signal at, and I don't think I did in the conversation on You Are Here either. I also don't think that I said we should be more amenable. I said we shouldn't overcommit ourselves to the bit to the point where we are disgusted when we think about, you know, procreating with a future wife or when we get to the point where we don't even want a wife because we're put off by it. That, I think, is uh, unnecessary and takes the bit too far. But none of what you said is, quote unquote, taking the bit too far. So I think you've kind of positioned yourself in my you know, figurative crosshairs, but my crosshairs were not on you, which is why I even said I don't want to counter signal you. I said that. I even also said that your uh, uh, opposition to it is virtuous, and I included that there was a red pill about women that needs to be said. I am not saying that we need to be more amenable to women or that we need to sacrifice things to get women to like us. I'm not saying or counter signaling you or saints or Christ himself. I'm just saying that like you did, most people should have children. It is something that's written within us by God into our you know, lives to, to seek it. And I think it should be sought after and practiced in a proper way that is not you know, just going after whatever you want, going what after carnal lusts you may have, which is why we save it for marriage. We don't practice it with anybody. We save it for marriage. So anyway, that would be my, my kind of closing statement. All right, closing arguments are finished. So right. that's the debate. I'm gonna become a wig nat. I'm driving around in the in the hate bus too now with with <laughs> with with Ray, Dingo, and Rand, and all the other guys. Hey, we should. I'm I'm just giving you a hard time. I mean, it's it's no, a I'm, fun it's a fun conversation. You know, like I said earlier, and no, I'm what I'm saying tonight's provocative and controversial. And uh, like I'm I said, I'm politically I'm, provoked. Yeah, I'm politically provoking everyone, and um, you know, and it's just a little fun thing. And I read Anglin, and I hear you, and you know, we've got these two ideas, and I'm thinking about them, and um, you know, we're trying to figure out our way in the world here. But just this sort of this knee jerk response from like, ho ho ho, <laughs> incels under attack. Like, let's let's investigate so no but you you i right, nigga you i right, nigga we still we still I mean, everyone in the live chat's being mean to you don't be mean to kai we love kai okay but um now that's a friendly the, disagreement that's the method well and and likewise you know again the reason why i said like oh i'm gonna like join the wignats mfs have have become wignats like rpg became a wignat for less <laughs> he, he literally left because you didn't like his take about your playlist so what yeah, i'm I trying to emphasize to the chat is that whenever anybody tells you well nick is unnecessarily a bridge burner most of the time it's because these people are you know b words who you know can't stand any of the heat so uh i i enjoy the disagreements um i think i think it's a good time I, uh, uh, by the way, though, can I? Can oh yeah, I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can I talk? Finally, is it? Is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, uh It's yeah. It's like it's been like an hour, and I haven't said a word on my own stream. Uh, so I, I'd like to say, I'd like to, if you don't, if you guys don't mind, you know, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to just say something here. Uh, <laughs> no, hey, don't, don't, hey, don't, don't take it like if you know. I don't mind. This is this has literally been the easiest stream I've ever done in my entire life, and I've made like thirty one hundred dollars. So like, I'm not upset at all. Like, you guys can keep going all night. I'll just sit here and play Minecraft music over you, whatever. Uh, Beardson, uh, can you shut? Up? We're trying to talk over here. Come on. I, but uh, I, I, I do want to like jump in. I, I'm we're, like, we're not going to rehash the whole debate. I don't want to get into that. But I do have one thing that I wanted to say to Kai is I feel like Kai, you, you are like needlessly elaborating on something that doesn't need to be elaborated on. Too, I think that's a big part of this. Like, you, I think you underestimate the chat and the audience and the people that are listening to you to the point where you feel like you have to explain all of these things to them or it's like oh it's a bit and blah 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 and everything else like people are still like i don't think i, I don't i mean maybe there, there might be like some people that are like yeah you know what i want to be just like nick and i don't want to have kids and they'll have like a perfect situation or you know or their life will lead them in that into that path and they'll turn it down but that's i mean i, I think that's 
that's, you know, I don't know, maybe a small handful of people. Not to say that people don't listen to Nick or anything like that, but at the end of the day, I think people's carnal urges and desires are going to win out in the end regardless, you know, for the most part. And I just feel like you're just, like, really, like, elaborate. It's like, I just don't think, I think it's because you're, like, you're kind of a new fag. And I don't mean to insult you there, but I think it's just kind of oh, like you're uh... a new fag and you don't get it. You know what I can mean? Can I ask? Can I just ask? <laughs> what are new fag standards? Because unironically, that's the one thing that starts to annoy me. I've been in this for going on almost three years now. I'm you're I'm, you're I'm, on TikTok, okay? That's a to totally different world, man. Like you had to be on Twitter. It was so. Is it? I okay. Well, I guess. I guess. What I do you mean? I guess. I know, nigga. I was there. No, no. Like I said, <laughs> hey, hey. I just. Uh, I've seen it as like a time thing, but you are, you are, and I, I don't mean to sound like, you know, chipper about this. Genuinely, you guys have to be the arbiters about like who's new, who's old and whatnot. So I guess I am a new fag, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, you are, I, here's the thing. No, I mean, maybe no, I'm middle-aged, no I'm a middle to, fag. No, no, you're a new fag. Uh, no, no offense to you or Wurzel Rude or anybody else that came from TikTok, but that's like, it's like Fisher Price over there, man. Like we're, <laughs> like, I mean, we're literally on Twitter, like we're fucking killing people, man. Like, like we're in the fucking trenches, you know, like fucking machine guns down and you guys are out and back playing with fucking like water hoses. Not, not even Nerf guns, like water hoses, man. I'm sorry. You know, so yeah, you're you know you're 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 in the world now that we're in, but you're very new to it. You know, <laughs> That's I, don't, hilarious. I don't think Nick would disagree with me on that. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, I mean these these you're you're part of the new school. You know, you're part of the new new class, Groyper class of 2030 <laughs> or whatever, you know, with Wurzel and, uh, and nine more years till I graduate or yeah, eight more years. It's a 10 year. It's a 10 I'm going to kill myself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I'm ten so done. Of, um, Suicide yeah. rate is like twice the national average <laughs> in Tell schools. You what, Kai, I'm going to give you a membership to the weekly sweat gum road. And when you finish all of that, and then I maybe I have one. I think I still have one. I okay. bought one a while back. I yeah, don't know you, if it kept updating, but yeah. I mean, once you watch every single weekly sweat, and then you go back watch the archives of America First, then maybe you know that's like your your. It's like uh, you know when you get your driver's permit, you know, and you have to drive for like you know six months or something. Yeah, that's what it is. You have to watch at least uh, uh, one thousand hours of uh, America First and weekly sweat content to be able to take the test to graduate. It's like Scientology. You need to give. Uh, you need to buy like a million gold premium packages or whatever. <laughs> level, level up. Work your way through the ranks. The the, the Groyper yeah. hierarchy is like Scientology. Like you have to buy the gum roads, and then you unlock different <laughs> yeah, parts yeah. of the lore. Buy the courses and level up. Yeah, and then you have the sea ship or whatever the fucking vessel. I mean, do you know what the Lucas room is, Kai? Um, no. This is Esther. Yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is yeah, that. Yeah. I, I actually remember the episode of America First that I started with. It was um, titled Demographics Are Destiny. Um, I don't know if you remember the one. It was one of the ones, maybe the first one you did after the Groyper Wars. <laughs> I remember a, that was the first one I ever watched. Yeah, do you, mm. you remember Demographics or Destiny, Nick, from your show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> from the I thousand remember when episodes? I about demographics. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that break. I, I remember it. Graphics. Right. Yeah, that I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay. Sorry. To me, that was a pivotal moment. Sorry that it's not the fondest memory to you guys. But. <laughs> no, people <laughs> give me for reminiscing. People do that to me all the time. They're like, hey, uh, do you know which episode it was where Lady Maga came on? And I'm like, bro, I have no fucking idea. Just watch all of them and eventually you'll get there, man. I don't I don't know what to tell you. They they make it even better. You remember that one time you like were ranting about that guy from Twitter? <laughs> it's it's so oh, general. Yeah. yeah. It's Here's the, the catalog, five hundred episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh Which yeah. one is it? Like all of them. Real. Yeah, no idea. But um Yeah, anyways, Kyle, what? you suck, man. Hey. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm hey, kidding. Hey, I'm hey. kidding. No, I'm not upset by that. I'm not No, can we I, can, hey, actually can the, we can we the, can we go back to the shirtless TikTok thing, though? <laughs> yeah, let's just, pick up I, I literally... Look, man. Let's I, unpack that. We're unpacking this, too. I was going to have a call with one of my IRLs. I got another one of those messages where it's like, 
Yeah, just want to be clear. Um, I don't ever want to be friends with you again. And I was going to like call with him and like decompress, but I have to talk about shirtless TikToks, like the lifter subculture and an incel dumb for three hours. This is my purgatory. <laughs> you signed up for it. Nobody asked you to be here, yeah, buddy. Yeah, was the one. I did message. Hey, bring me into the Discord. How naive I was. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. The... um. Nobody has a problem with you being a bodybuilder, but why are you posting pictures of your naked body on Instagram? I don't think I'm naked. I never take off my pants. Your naked um, chest, naked torso. Well, you ever been to a beach? No. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. The the bikini question needs you're to be better. You're not at the beach. Well, I mean, yeah, you're not on the beach. You're, the t you're posting a picture on the internet that's going to be there forever. Mm. I mean, sure, yeah. Um, I Bro, it's like it's it's you know look we call out female thoughtery and that's we have to call out male thoughtery too i think it's only fair yeah but i i think it's wrong to say it's like for female attention i mean if you think it's for that i uh, i mean i guess i would say that's not really the case but i don't know if i buy I, it female attention i don't think that's necessary i don't think it's necessarily what it is but i uh yeah, I don't. I don't know what exactly the purpose is. I I can't. I, can't I don't want to see it. it out. I personally don't want to see it. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's it's very like um, e boy sort of behavior, you know. Ah, what? what this oh, is the, scor the scorpion <laughs> and the frog. This is the scorpion and the frog. I can't deny my my true nature, Beardson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with e boys. I don't know what that's. That's a little slanderous. Oh, you can't say that, Nick. Cause, you know they're gonna clip that now. You're yeah, what, what, was, what was the, the account you were following on the? Was it Twitter or Instagram? That one like e boy account, and people gave you a big hard time for it. That was fake. Number one. Oh, and was it fake? Two, I thought it was just yeah. a bit. I thought you were literally just trying to get them upset. No, there's like a handful of those that are faked on so like some of them are real and some of them are fake like one of them that trans cat girl account like that was a j i did like that post that was like years <laughs> ago and i hey, hey i like that as a fucking joke okay i like yeah. people act like i got caught it's like i knew people would see that i literally posted a screenshot of it myself mm. it was a joke yeah i mean uh, you used to joke about like, this shit all the time on the sweat and stuff it was funny yeah whatever so it's, this is a different time you know here's the thing you make a handful of gay jokes over the course of five years and you're a fucking gay guy i make you know heterosexual jokes all the time nobody accuses me of being heterosexual so you, it's, you it's, suck it's, one penis and suddenly you're gay no i no i'm, I'm doing a bit but unironically we can make gay <laughs> jokes, okay? We can. And I, I well, was and gonna, I was gonna go all in on that, and I was gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna double down, and I was like, no, I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> but, but it's like, hey, what the fuck? I mean, you can make, you can make sussy jokes, okay? It's part of being funny, but whatever. Um, anyway, um, but about the e boy thing, back to that. It's like this is a Britney Venti talking point, Beards, and this is why I have to. I had to call you on the carpet there because Britney Venti's like, oh, you know, Nick always calls on e girls, but what about e boys? It's like boys are different than girls. Okay, boys rule, girls drool, boys can use the internet, girls can't. Like, and people are like, oh, Nick, and then people say, oh, well, Nick likes e boys, not e girls, because he's gay. It's like no, men can use the internet. Women cannot. So no, this no. e-boy hey, is not the same thing. It's not I, the same thing. I've never, I've literally never watched Britney Venti's show in my life. The only time I've ever even listened to her talk was the one time I went on her show, which was a huge mistake. So yeah, I, I retract. I retract the e-boy comment. I didn't even, I didn't even know it was. A th I thought I was being clever. I did. I didn't know it was an existing uh, thing. Yeah. Well. Now you know, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm educated. Saw this, this comment in the chat. I'm an agent of APU sent to subvert AM. Bird. True, true. He's a double agent there <laughs> yeah. for Vince Dow, oh, The Vince Dow MK Ultra training. It's like the part in Black Ops where you, I'm like Mason and Nick is like JFK. <laughs> I'm like jittering. Like the gun's going over to JFK. Trying to break like through Vince that. Dow's programming. 
I like that people accuse Vince Dow of being a Chinese agent because he's like yeah. ethnically Asian. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> like, like, is Vince Dow a Chinese agent? It's like, well, he looks pretty fucking Chinese to me. So what do you think? <laughs> He, oh, look, he looks like Vietnamese or something. He's like, they look Chinese. I don't know. That's kind of yeah, that's kind of the best bit. I like the the whole like that guy's Mormon. He's not white. <laughs> it's just the whole bit of who, whoever is uh, part of some subgroup is just not white. Um. Yeah, I agree with that part though. I definitely agree with that part. Yeah. yeah. We're like, well, I, I was gonna say we're like the most white religion, but I realize like most Christian denominations are pretty white. Yeah, that's true. I think Catholic is the most white religion, honestly, because it's uh, because Jesus. Aren't there a lot white. of Mexican Catholics, though? Yeah, aren't there a lot of like Mexican Mormons too? And aren't there Not really? Like, uh, There's a lot of white yeah. Mormons. Are, can you even be racist in Mormonism, or what's the story <laughs> with that? <laughs> Actually, we have a pretty racist lore. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, don't, don't you know. think like black people are like aliens or something? It used to be that uh, we believed they were the descendants of Cain and that they had their black skin because of uh, Cain's crimes or because it was it was in Nephi and the descendants of like this this one group got a black skin because of their sins. But that was uh, a poor contextualization of the words which are used as well in the Bible. The word white and black is often not referenced to physical pigment but rather spiritual complexion. So, and that's mm -hmm. honestly the people who are hardest to, you know, convert to the church are the ones who are like, oh yeah, I've heard of you guys. You're racist polygamists. So I'm like, well, we don't really do either of that stuff. Anymore. Well, we're not racist. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 nothing to do with you guys anymore. It's like, like, no, 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 wait, wait, no, we can bring back polygamy. No, 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 we can be racist again. No, no just, just come back. It's like, those are the toughest people to win over. <laughs> Man, that's uh, it's a Mormonism thing. So it's no longer racist and it's no longer sexist. Okay, well, I've, I've heard enough, I think, on that <laughs> one. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know, you should consider Hold being, on. becoming Catholic instead. Let's look up the demographics. Catholic demographics. Hey, I uh, Pew, Pew I think Pew has whites at eighty-five percent, and then Catholics are at. Let's see. Well, ooh, oof. Oh no, never mind. That's by by population. Let's see if they have it by race. Um. Yeah, but Catholics have more white people ooh. in it. Brazil and Mexico are the most Catholic countries. And Philippines is third, United States is fourth, Italy's fifth. What's the most Mormon country, though? America? Yeah. Well, America's the most goblino Jewish nation <laughs> in the world. So. Well, what do you think of the church? The church is the most based, uh, epic. You know, I mean, have you ever read the Family Proclamation? That's literally no. church canon. No, I, oh, watched, so I, watched the I don't South read Park heresy. Episode. <laughs> yeah, unironically, most people who talk to me about the church, they're like, "Yeah, I saw that South Park episode. You guys are wacky." Honestly, I'm like, oh my god, they sold I've me. Had the South Park conversation like a hundred times. Yeah, they sold me on it. I'm convinced. No, I think I'm thinking about converting to Catholicism. I'm think I'm going to go to church on Sunday. Oh, I just Glad ordered oh. just ordered a, a little order of mass leaflet, so I wouldn't be like a total retard when I go in there, and uh, so. I may, I maybe have to put down my my KJV down, Kai. I'm sorry. Wait, what? Is, what is the uh, the Catholic Church? Do you guys have a copy that or a, a, a translation you guys adhere to most? Because the LDS Church is like it it is KJV only, um, and a lot of Baptist denominations are the same way. Yeah. I the Catholic that's... favorite is the Dewey Rames. That's that's what most cat most Catholics support. I, th I have a couple translations. I think I have a New International Version and I think one other. I'm not a fan uh, of the NIV. There's a few that you can use. But, um, yeah, Catholics, the cool thing about us is that, um, you know, apostolic succession and, um, you know, real scripture and uh and all that kind of stuff so so we got we, we got that going for us certainly oh yeah i told yeah, my dad well, we've got we've got the dlc so yeah 
I told my dad I was in a good Catholic church, and he's like freaking out. He's called me like three times. He's like, "Are you are you sure about this?" I was like, "Look, I you know, I get it. You know, you're prod You know, you're Baptist. You grew up Baptist. I get it. But it's just like, hey, you know, just let me let me check it out. Let me check it out. You know." He's like seriously like concerned. He's like, "But I just don't I just don't get it. You know, just yeah, I can confess your sins to a man. You know, why not just talk to Jesus?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, I, look, I know, man. I get it. You know." <laughs> But, yeah, I, I'm going to check it out, at least, you know. That's kind of funny. Yeah. He's just he's just old school. He's like 60, you know. That's how yeah. it goes. Classic it goes. Dixie. Dixie! At the, yeah, me and Jaden just had this big conversation about it the other day. Where, uh, I'm, you know, because you get these pastors, and they're like, they're just these people. I mean, yeah, okay, some of them go to school, but it's like sometimes these pastors are just like guys that really like are into God, which yeah. is, you know, great if you're running like a fucking fan club. Like, yeah, I really like Star Wars. Or I really like Magic the Gathering. So I'm going to start a comic book store. It's like, okay, but we're talking about life and death here. And niggas be like, you know, I just felt like I should be I should be preaching the good word. It's dude, that's like, literally oh, okay, my dad. Man. That was literally my dad, dude. No shit. He was like, he just started going to church for a while. Now they're like, you should be pastor. And he's like, hmm, all right. You know, he didn't go to school for it or nothing. <laughs> he did that for like two years. And he's like, yeah, I suck at this. I'm done. And it's so like polemical and it's like lifestyle shit. Like that's, that's yeah. the thing. You go to a Catholic church and it's like you're stepping into another dimension. Then you go to these Protestant churches and it's like fucking Alcoholics Anonymous or like a self-help like circle jerk or not. Mm. I don't mean to be so duh, rude about it, but it's no, like, right. they and it's the like, drums, stuff that's like, the drums. you know, you pray and and watch and you'd be doing better in your career and you'll be attracting more people and you do this and that and you know and then they get into political stuff and it's like and you know catholics can get political too don't get me wrong but at least uh there's some semblance of like the transcend and you go to some of these protestant churches and it's like it's indistinguishable from any other kind of like civic or community gathering yeah, I'm just tired of just I'm tired of the like live the, bands. The music. Yeah. Yeah, the drum sets and whatnot. I mean, the we've got the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, which is one of the best choirs in the entire world. We have like all of the world's top five organists. In fact, the third best organist in the world attends my home ward. Um, and so it's it's super moving because for the fourth of July, we sing um Oh, I'm trying to remember the song we sing. I'm trying to remember. I think we sing the Star Spangled Banner as, as one of the hymns in church. And it's like moving. Everybody stands up. We like put our hands over our hearts. The rest, like we have a big hymn book. Most beautiful song ever is If You Could Hide a Kolob. And it's, you know, it's very reverent. But you do go into like some of the like non-denom churches and whatnot. And you see the drum set. You see the guitars. And it's like, mm -hmm. uh-oh. And the whole like, oh, you're swaying back and forth. I really feel the spirit. <laughs> it's like the black, like, oh, how? You're just like exclaiming it in the middle of church. Bro, it's even worse know, with like Pentecostals, there's, man. There's a real reverence. Pentecostals are the worst, man, because they, yeah. they, start, they start speaking in tongues and all that. I went to a Pentecostal church when I was like real, really young. And I was like scared the whole time because like people are going like, I'm like, dude, what the <laughs> fuck, man? What is going on here? Like one time a lady brought like a snake and then like they're like dancing <laughs> with this fucking snake. And I'm like, get the fuck. Like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare, man. Like, how, like, yeah, like what yeah. happened to just like you know, pray, make you know, say a prayer, read a few verses, go home. You know, these these people are like, hi, yes, just up and I saw what I was, I saw what I was, I saw what I was. I'm like, dude, like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I literally, it felt like demonic. I thought it was like the end verse of God. I'm like, these, like, I thought you're like possessed by a demon or something. You know, I was yeah, like, wait yeah. for That's a head a to like, turn around backwards or something and look at me and start vomiting. You know. Protestantism's like <laughs> American in the worst way. It's like the American version of Christianity in the worst. And and I love America, but like, it, but with its worst sort of like excesses and faults, it's just like, you know, Europeans come to this land and then they just become insane. Like they build the country in this like Indian like graveyard, and then they turn into these like they're cursed. Yeah, it becomes weird like <laughs> pagan stuff and these fanatical type people, and they're fucking like so. You know, really like 
there there does have to be a sort of returning tradition to tradition like you know richard spencer wasn't wrong about everything when he said that we should be more like europe and look to sort of pan european identity i mean he he, he was wrong about a lot but there is some truth in that because when you look at uh, like a lot of america there's a lot of this just like ignorant blind pride and it's like I'm sorry, but I, I actually don't take pride in this like Walmart consumer culture. Like when, when I see these people with like the stars and bars and like shooting guns in the air and like, uh, you know, I mean, I get I get it if you're like on the frontier or whatever. But so much of it is just so like gratuitous and just like celebrating ignorance and celebrating like being a Philistine. And some people are like, oh, yeah, well, yeah I'm a I'm a ignorant. Yeah, we're not cultured. It's like, why would we this? Why would we aspire to be like that? You know what I mean? Like, because you look at these great cities in America like these great catholic cities like chicago i mean obviously not now it's been destroyed by immigration but you look at like how chicago used to be or like how new york used to be when they had these like ethnic waves of immigration and they were catholic and these cities were it was like a shining city on a hill and now we've got this like husk this like caricature of america that was created by like focus groups and marketing consultants it's like a like the whole country's a jackass movie like i'm not proud of of that like flavor of america you know i mean and, and that way we definitely got to go back yeah it's, it's like the uh the the naked girl with the american flag bikini yeehaw it's it's so awful and i think that honestly that makes the boomers like so particularly insufferable but it was also what was so good about trump is because trump i think is the only person who can break them out of the mk ultra spell of you know glorifying america no matter what so you know that quote you mentioned all the time the american dream is dead uh that is one of it's like the the word the the passphrase that woke the boomers up and actually got them to think critically about the state of the country um and people who downplay that like the mass boomer awakening uh, i think it's very foolish of course you know the boomers in their foolishness you know went 100 uh 100 uh, percent t towards it and became like QAnon boomers but i think ultimately they uh they improved yeah well I mean yeah Oh, go ahead. It means a lot that Trump came from New York because before Trump, you had Bush and you had McCain and you had Romney and you had like all these like sort of the worst of America. And then Trump came out and he was like, he's this great industrialist from a great American city. Like he's what you think of in a positive way when you think of America. You think about like can do entrepreneurial confident brash bold you know when you think about mccain or romney or bush you think of just like this this J jesus land type stuff and i don't mean that like negative towards jesus but you think of this caricature of like this wasteland like post frontier just sort of like dump third world shithole which is kind of like what america in the interior is becoming N not through any fault of the people within these places but because of like venture capital and free trade and like deindustrialization and so on but it's like lives up to the worst sort of expectations or worst perceptions of america <clears throat> and you know trump came from new york and it's like Here's a guy in a fucking suit and tie in a skyscraper, and he's like the one of the most famous people in the world from like Hollywood and everything. And I mean, yeah, we hate Hollywood as an institution, but like what it represents, which is like big and like cultural hegemony, like and and same goes for Trump being rich. Like we hate billionaires, but with Trump, it represents success, you know, and like the American dream. Like it meant a lot because that that. I've said this for so long, like that renewed the right wing that gave us like a big idea and a vision. It made us feel like fucking cool. You know, it's like Trump was a cool guy. And now and he came from New York. You know, he didn't come from the middle of nowhere. He didn't know offense. He didn't come from like <laughs> he didn't come from Utah. <laughs> he wasn't some like the Mormon who drinks milk or something. Again, no <laughs> offense, guy. He was like, I'm from New York. And, you know, like if you fuck around with us. And we will do things to you that has never been done to anybody before. It's like, yeah, that was awesome. And the biggest reason why Trump is gay now is because all these weirdos like him, like, you know, all these fucking bizarre people that are like, you know, we're, we're deplorables, man. We're the deplorable choir. And, you know, 
like they turned it into this weird, like cringy boomer political thing. Anytime you do a political thing, like the dregs of the earth come out for it. Like the fucking Walmart Sunday afternoon crowd comes out for any, like literally any political rally. It's like smelly, like old people with like old smelly, like jackets on and like weird political hats. And they have like nose hair coming out of their noses. And like that you find these people at everything. And like, that is what people think of when they think of right-wing politics and then trump came out and it was like no actually it represents futurism and like reactionary authority and like actually being successful and stuff that's what went wrong with trumpism because now it's inherited by all the you know all the latter people i just mentioned and uh you know now trump's at mar-a-lago and he gets visited by these like frumpy old people <laughs> you know frumpy old people fly there from you know instead of going to uh what's that place in uh, Tennessee by the instead of going to like Gatlinburg to like ride the Ferris wheel or whatever and eat funnel cake instead they like fly to Mar-a-Lago I know I'm like hating on a lot of Trump's base right now <laughs> and I, I don't mean to sound like elitist or anything but like we've kind of got to get real about it like America needs a little bit of a facelift we kind of need to be younger and like cooler and sexier that's just a reality I know people don't like to hear that but it's just true that was a huge part of Trump's appeal at least for me, maybe that's superficial, but that's how I feel. No, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, it's like, it kind of goes hand in hand with like, you know, it's sort of like Larry the Cable Guy, Jeff Foxworthy stuff, where it's just like people are proud of being ignorant. And I don't think that's anything like cool or respectable. Uh, you know, I'm ignorant, but I'm not proud of it by any stretch of the imagination. Like I want to, I want to be smarter and better we've lost this like drive of self-improvement in this country really where like now self-improvement means you know i don't know watching a fucking instagram inspirational video and like buying nfts it's fucking so gay yeah i don't know it's it's kind of tough because like i say all the time like yeah i don't want retarded people to vote <laughs> and then i look at some of the people who are like on my own side and i'm like Man, you know, maybe we need to rework this take, and it makes me feel bad because I don't want to. I don't want to come off mean to them, but it's uh, it's just kind of tough. Yeah, I don't mean to be mean to the base, but it's like we we want excellence. We want excellence. Yep. We want awesomeness, and Trump like exuded awesomeness. Like well, there was this thing he said where he went out to the uh, one of the rallies, and he's like. We call them the elite. They're not the elite. We're the elite. And I was, was almost like face palming because I mean, I like I understand rhetorically like what he's doing there, but like there there is something detrimental going on that the right wing doesn't really have an elite, and it definitely is or became at, at one point there was a right wing of like you know, people in cities and wealthy people and professionals and stuff. And that's sort of the problem with the right wing is now it's become this like, it like Bannon's right. It's become this like proletariat thing. And um, I, I don't know. I don't like love that. Honestly, I don't yeah. love this thing where it's like, let's just get all the working poor people together. Um, you know, it's like, well, can't we have uh, educated people? Can't And I'm not educated, but it's like, can't we have educated people? Can't we have like rich, good looking, you know, businessmen? Can't we have, you know, someone like Trump? Do we really have to have like, you know, like you said, L Larry the Cable Guy for president? Like that's <laughs> literally what it feels like sometimes being a Republican is like Larry the Cable Guy for president. When you see some of these fucking advertisements like, like, like Brian Kemp when he ran for governor a few years ago and he was like, well, I'm going to go down to the board and round up some illegals myself. Yep. Well, I just <laughs> said that. And it's like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, no, when, when they show up in the bad. ads and they've just got big guns and the entire ad is like, I shot a mannequin with Nancy Pelosi on it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like all the ad is. I think what, what people forget and like, even, this is the most frustrating thing. Like you have to kind of slap viewers around sometimes because it's like, look, you guys represent me too. Like you guys are supposed to make the people who you enjoy look good. So if you go out there and you're spouting off a bunch of stuff and you're wearing a shirt that, you know, says some, you know, retarded quip on it, I don't look very cool. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, like, say what you will about, like, Rush Limbaugh, but at least he was, like, he had that fucking sort of aesthetic. He had, like, the gold-plated microphone and, like, fucking always smoking the cigars, you know, and he's just, like, a big fat guy just sitting around. Like, I don't know. Like, I miss that era like a of, like... a cyberpunk character. <laughs> yeah, literally, almost. Like, I miss... I Like, say what you will about the guy, but I liked his whole vibe and aesthetic and the swagger, you know? Like, you just don't have that in the Republican Party anymore. Yeah, I wish we were cooler. That's all. I mean, like, yeah. it, it's just that you look at, um, you look at like the like what we aspire to be. Like, you look at the Roman Empire. You look at like the the concert of powers in Europe in the 19th century, and like even recent historical examples of like you know reactionary movements, like Hugo Boss type shit. And you look at where we are now, and it's like really like you know i have to get like a piece of straw you know should i be chewing <laughs> on a piece of straw like you know and i know that again that might sound offensive or whatever but we, we've got to reconcile with some of these deficits here like um we want i want a right-wing city you know we want right-wing cities we want to be like a right-wing um power but with like you know development and like technology and stuff doesn't mean necessarily well, like, i don't say the t word or i because he's gonna be he's gonna lose his shit if you mention the word technology oh yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 he's and prem <laughs> but can't, i can't wait for him to grow out of that phase yeah well, phase. In time. <laughs> hey, you're like, the one talking about crushing my head with a rock. Yeah, well, it's just where's cheap. The cool, where's the cool aesthetics, you know? Like the Soviets. The Soviets, say what you will. And they were peasants. They were literally serfs. But they had such a cool look. Yeah, it was evil. Okay, yeah, they killed lots of people. But they looked fucking cool, didn't they? You know, and they were far. What's our excuse? They were farmers. Well, until I killed them all. But, I mean, there they were farmers at one point, And they were, they were factory workers. And then they were in outer space, and they were futuristic, and uh, and it was awesome. So, well, it's kind of, and um, same goes for the you know the black shirts and the brown shirts and stuff. And um, and now we just have this. I feel like it's either like faggoty, like metropolitan liberal, like global citizen thing, which is just awful, or it's like this you know c country like again it's like america's a third world country because there's like an argument to be made about the south uh when america started this like you know just jeffersonian you know yale men farmer and like the southern like landed gentry like there is like there an argument that there is a true aristocracy and like a sort of like parallel like european civilization in the south like i could understand that argument before the civil war now it's like the interior of the country is just, um, it's just rough. You know, I mean, there's no other way around. It's just sort yeah. of rough. And uh, people try to champion and say, we're, we're proud of being from flyover country or whatever. And I get it. It's like their home and everything. But like you go there and the best restaurant in town is fucking Applebee's. Like by any objective standard, this is not like a thriving, like I wouldn't be proud of Applebee's, you know. And they, well, it's like Applebee's, France is like Applebee's. It's like, yeah, I like if that is what we're aspiring to, the like, we just quit while we're ahead. Like, it's just, it's just sort of, it's rough, you know? So. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's, but, you know, I, I mean, we, I need, we need like Huey Long. We need Huey Long back, that kind of thing. And I, the Star Wars thing is so true. Like, when I was a kid, when everybody was a kid watching Star Wars, it's always, well, the bad guys look so cool. They've got the cooler ships and everything. That's what people remember. Yeah. Yeah, I want, uh, we want to look cool. We want to, that's a big part of it. We have to, we have to be cool. Yeah. And Applebee's yeah. is not cool, okay? Applebee's <laughs> is not cool. And the deplorable choir is not cool. I'm sorry. And, um, you know, like, here's a good example. You go on that Frank speech by Mike Lindell and, like, do go on that right now. You go on Frank's speech and there's, like, a video section and just like look at some of the video content on that site and like if that is all, if that's all that there was in America I would kill myself like I seriously would kill myself <clears throat> in real life because like I watch these programs and it's like 
boomers that don't know how to work computers and it's like all these weirdos talking about politics and they're like we want to replace hollywood it's like i don't know i think honestly i'd actually prefer hollywood you know i think i'd rather just sort of suffer the occasional uh cuties which is horrible you know suffer the occasional like james gunn pedo tweet or whatever then watch like some of the shit that goes on on frank's beach tv or whatever <laughs> they'll watch some of this like bizarre shit because you know every every so often you get dry with ryan gosling every so often you get uh you know so blade runner 2049 like you get a ryan gosling movie you get a leonardo dicaprio movie there will never be anything like that produced by like you know QAnon tv or whatever on frank's speech so yeah have you guys seen the that movie with robert pattinson the a24 one good time yeah that's a great is movie. that any good yeah, okay it's yeah i was one i was thinking about watching it it was done by the guys that did uh, uncut gems Oh, let's go. I could tell some of the, like, I was like five minutes in and some of the shots that are really up close gives yeah. you the same kind of feeling of anxiety. Yeah, good time's awesome. But, um, yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, that's the thing too, man. And, and like, because Wignets get so caught up with, like, this whole idea. I mean, I, I don't, I, I hate, dude, I, I, I can't, I can't not help myself. I've been doing this for five years. I have to talk about Wignets. I can't help it, man. It's like a fucking mental tick or something. But, like, people, like, get so caught up with the politics stuff that they just like disassociate themselves from like art and culture and like contemporary things because like and i think that's dangerous too right like like you said man it's like i'd I'd, you know if i gotta put up with you know some you know fucking some coca-cola ad or like you know two niggas kissing or whatever to get like a you know uncut gems or a lighthouse or whatever man like i'm fine with that and like some people just would rather just like throw the whole thing aboard and just not participate in it at all but i think that just alienates you further too it's like you're you know what i mean it's like we got to stop alienating ourselves from the from the like culture and society that we live in instead just like you know not necessarily embrace it but at least take part in it so you're you can at least know what the fuck's going on yeah i want creative people i want creative talented people to make things that are inspiring i I guess is what i'm saying and like when i look at a lot of what america's become it's 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 um there's just a lot of sadness out there it's just like like you said it's um it's sort of this pride ignorance um i know i sound like a libtard when i say that but it's true you know and we i want to see the future you know i want to be inspired and um like we're a big part of that i think like america first is uh it's in infancy still but we're sort of creating an aesthetic we're creating um you know an i like a, a look for the right wing that's never really been done in america before because usually when people see right right wing they think like stodgy and sort of like dorky and lame some people might think that about us still but it's like it's a little bit younger it's a little bit more high t it's not it's not top down being run by like jews or think tanks or whatever and like um but that that's like that's a big goal because i i don't like i remember i always differentiated myself from kids even when i was in high school i was like a libertarian and you had like a lot of these young republican types and they're like my dad worked on the nixon campaign and they have like their fucking jeans pulled up to their nipples basically you know they have like a flannel shirt and like tube socks and their jeans pulled up to their fucking nipples and like that's <laughs> that's like that was like this like stodgy like i'm a young republican and like i'm voting for ben carson shit and i was like i'm a libertarian and like you know i was a little more liberal when i was in high school i was like but that's what there was you know i was like a ram ron paul supporter um and now i'm reactionary but it's like we're i want something a little more cutting edge a little more inspiring go ahead kai i know you're gonna say something go ahead as I talk, you're gonna cut me off. So, <laughs> no, he's not here. Oh, he's asleep. No, I'm here. I'm just giving you some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I unironically didn't have anything to think. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm editing a video. This is like the one time that you were supposed to talk. Oh, <laughs> it's like, it's like every time I go to talk, you cut me off, and I'm like, All right, I'm just gonna. Okay, well, I, I've got an idea that. Oh, here we can see. <laughs> <laughs> no no you're good i'm giving you a hard time yeah i don't know it's just it's uh 
I don't know. There's not there's not enough creative people. There really isn't. People uh People get discouraged very easily, I think, when it comes to art and culture and stuff. Because, like, I mean, I know you're, like, you know, I think this is one of the reasons why me and, me and you, Nick, get along so well. It's like we both, like, like things, you know? Like, we both, like, rap music or good, you know, good music and good movies and stuff like that. And uh, same thing with you, Kais. It's like you, too. I think you've got a, a, a pretty well-developed taste and stuff like that, too. But... I don't know. I just don't, you just don't really see enough of that from the right wing. I don't know. It's like a tired point or whatever. It's like I feel like it sucks because I feel like people think like right wing media and art and culture and stuff has to be just like so on the nose and obvious, and it's it's just like so infuriating to me. You know what I mean? It's like oh, if if I'm gonna make a right wing thing, I need to make it to where it's like yeah, BLM sucks. It's like nah, man, just make something that's good and you know not yeah. paused. That's really it. Yeah, they make a song about like Joe Biden or like Roger Stone. That kind of shit drives me crazy because it's like, you know, the left idea of culture is like let's let's make um Star Wars but with a girl in it. And right wing idea of culture is like, what if we made a rap song about like inflation? <laughs> <You know? laughs> a rap song about like uh, you know, fucking Kamala Harris and like George Soros and we just made rap lyrics we turn a Fox News Sean Hannity monologue into a rap song it's like it's just not even we're not even playing the same sport we're not on the same planet as the left when it comes to that because they're like well, what if we showed kids you know like all what if we exhumed the corpse of all these kids their nostalgia from 20 years ago but we injected like a diversity and inclusion token character and then right wing people are like well, Sean Handy, but uh, a rapper, <laughs> little little Trump. What about a rapper? But his, his name's a little Trump, and he raps about building a border wall. But yeah, that's, that's <laughs> and, awesome. And even even that is not done as well by right wingers. Like the best piece of like very overtly political media that was Republican in 2016 was the epic rap battles of history, and that's made by leftists. But tr the Trump verse in that was more iconic than anything right wingers did. Besides, probably well, Bryson Gray stuff. Well, can't stump the Trump was pretty big back in 2016. Yeah. I mean, we can't discount the stump. That was, that shit was pretty fire. But I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's like, there's just no like, like yeah. It's like Nick said, man. It's like literally like, say what you will about lefties, but it like, and I think they had. I think part of the reason like why like shit's gone so bad is because they've gotten so like more overt with it and it's more obvious now but i mean like five six seven eight years ago it was very subtle the way that they did it right now it's like yeah you turn on snl and it's like i'm i'm joe biden and, and you know I, i'm a fly on on mike pence's head <laughs> you know that sort of shit and it's all it's mostly fucking trash now but yeah there was i don't know there was some subtlety to it at least back then and you just don't you don't have that anymore now and uh, the yeah. right, I don't think, has ever had it. Ever. <laughs> like, yeah, that's history. true. Like, what's well, the we Daily had Clint Wire Eastwood. thing? We had Clint Eastwood, and we had, like, John Wayne. Yeah. And Charles Heston, and Mel Gibson. And there used to be... There used to be some right-wing media coming out, and, um... You know, now... Now it's just all a bunch of crap. Now we get these movies about, like... Uh, an abortion debate at college, you know, it's like yeah. that. They literally turned that into a movie, you know, or like God's not dead. It's yeah. like, what if you know, your liberal professor said that God isn't real, but one student fought back and said, uh, actually, I'm a born again evangelical. Like, and then they turned that into a feature length movie, and they always include the same actors, like that Sorbo or whatever. Yeah. Fuck name is I'm yeah like, kevin sorbo uh, yeah the fucking hurt yeah, and, guy and james fields or not james <laughs> <laughs> what's that what's movie that i want to watch that <laughs> charles roll reloaded no what's the, what's the guy's name the big actor who was in um casino who's uh right wing oh uh james woods James, yeah. <laughs> yeah, James, James and Fields, Dean, Dean James Kane. Woods. They are, Dean Kane now too. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Gene Kane, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God's that not God's ring. not dead, but he's about to be. <laughs> 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 yeah, that other Fox News movie. Yeah. Dan Bongino produced, starring James Fields. <laughs> he is Baby Driver. He <laughs> is. <laughs> That's funny, man. Gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> ah, James Woods, James Fields. That's similar. James Woods was actually one of, my, one of my favorite, I guess, not inherently right-wing, but kind of right-wing movies, uh, Videodrome. It's just about yeah. how, like, like, fucking pornography and TV is evil. Yeah. It's good, pretty good, but it's old. God's not dead, he's surely alive, lit, roaring like a lion. It's like, can you just stop? Like, it just <laughs> makes me want to cringe up so hard because you look at god and you're like really like you're god this is your this is your pr you got to do something about this like dude, i don't know devil's making some great movies <laughs> <laughs> diamond dude i, I still I, I say this to this day diamond and silk is like the worst thing to ever happen to the Republic <laughs> Party, man. it really was man when Diamond and Silk hit, it's like it, it, everything just fucking went downhill. Like we were, we were being like subversive and edgy, you know. Like Hillary Clinton's talking about Pepe, then here comes fucking Diamond and Silk, and everyone's just like, I, I guess that, I guess we're doing this now. We're all gonna be fat, sassy black ladies and go, mm-hmm. And that's what the Republican Party is now. And that was yeah. that was all of the ads too on YouTube. Every single one you Every get was Tyler and Silk. That, that so was like the retarded. biggest threat to voter turnout was to the Diamond and Silk ads. Well, and I love that they're ostensibly supposed to be like a rebuttal when Democrats say like you're you're racist, you exclude black people, and they're ostensibly supposed to be the rebuttal to that. Like, no, we have Diamond and Silk, and like they they like repudiate that argument it's like no actually maybe we should go back to exclusion actually <laughs> because that, <laughs> that's what inclusion looks like uh why don't we give exclusion another another shot like can, can we can we go back for a second and see what that looks like because that's um but that's so typical you know you bring these people in and you get like them and uh brandon tatum and what's that sheriff what's his name from uh, Wisconsin? and you just clark whatever his name is yeah clark yeah. goofus yeah, oh, yeah. that's so bad man it's such a way like you go to these conservative events and it's completely like irredeemable like trying to pick out some redeeming characters from that it, it's impossible because you just get this cadre of like mediocre people token minorities like obvious jews um and uh grifters like you go to cpac and the, the, like you could set the whole uh, i don't want to say that but like <laughs> everyone there could like vanish um magically and like nothing of value would be lost you know what i mean because that's mm -hmm. the quality of people in the conservative movement is just so low because of the the incentive structure you know and like the the hiring and promotion the the sort of organizational principles that define it well and there's like we we keep being surprised like with this whole emily saves america thing like at some point it's just it's not novel like oh woman not conservative uh oh <laughs> and it's like i mean i i guess sure you can expose them or whatever but just means that the definition of conservatism is has become so watered down you're never going to be able to point out every single dumb roasty woman who calls herself a conservative but parties and does drugs well i mean, I mean that's, it's like a feature now that's what the whole that's what the whole that's how the tpusa and all those organizations even propagate themselves like do you think anybody would be interested in being a tpusa ambassador if they didn't fly you out and plow, plow you full of alcohol at a nightclub you know like mm. no one would want to fucking do that shit. They don't care. None of these, none of the t and like you even talk to half these people. They don't care about any of this stuff. They just like partying. That's all that it is, you know. It's so disgusting. It's just a big grooming organization, basically. That's true. True. 
All right, I'm going sleepy mode. I've got to learn about primates in the morning. But uh, good talking to you, gentlemen. Yeah. Adios, yeah. fellas. Night. See you, buddy. All right. Now it's just now it's just the old heads. The old yeah that one um. Long. <laughs> just the incels are left now. Ah uh, hi yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, we started talking about Kai, and then he jumped in here, and Kai, here we are. Kai can just smell the clout, you know what I mean? He's got, like, that sniffer. He's like, oh, someone's talking about me on a stream. It's time to it's time to get in there. All the new fags do. The new fags, it's like a verbal at. It's like a verbal, like, <laughs> notification. This cool. It really is. Like, I could say Dalton's I barely even say it. He's going to hop in my chat. Hey, did you call me? Hey. Can I, can I hop in? In the fucking lobby voice chat. Drag me in. Uh, like, like Veda the other day. Like literally. <laughs> that was so was funny. Talk about garbage. Like, oh great. Glad you're here, man. <laughs> no, we like. <laughs> Nick's, well, my Nick's just swinging at people tonight. I'm, I'm here for it, though. I love it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm tired, so I'm, my patience is thin. I'm on a rampage lately. I don't know what's going on with me, but uh, maybe it's being punished for so long. I don't know, but I'm sort of on a rampage. Um, yeah, January's just a shit month. It's been a good month, but it's been a shit month, too. Yeah. I'm working. I'm working too hard. I need a need a break. I need to just be by myself, collect myself, you know, maybe maybe in like a year and a half I'll just go underground for a month or something. Yeah. You should uh you definitely deserve it, man. I cuz I'm I'm I've been doing the, I've been streaming for 2 weeks and I'm ready to blow my fucking head off. So I can't even imagine what you got to deal with. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. Good stream tonight for you, huh? Dude, this has been the easiest stream I've ever done in my entire life. I haven't even done anything. I've made no content for six hours. <laughs> it's so funny that like me and Kai get in and just like monopolize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was fine with it. It's like finally like all the donations slow down, and then you're like, "Hey, let me hop in." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right." And then like, yeah, I have to. I do literally nothing. This is this is great. I'm just gonna be the official like cozy TV moderator. People, yeah, I'll just host a show. I'll collect all the money, and just people will come on and talk. That turned into like an impromptu debate. It was good though. It wasn't even supposed to be a debate. I mean, I'm just this nigga. I'm just spitting, and he comes in like lawyered up, and he's with like a ladies and gentlemen of the audience. You'll find that my. <laughs> Like, wait, what? Wait, what, what? Like, I'm in my underwear right now. And I'm literally, now we're quoting Matthew and the Corinthians. Like, I was like, okay, come on. Yeah. These, you know what it is? It's As I've gotten older, I realized this. Like, when I was young like that, I was really into the books and I was really into it. Now I've been doing it for five years. It's, it's, it's such a, you know, it's like when there's a, like an old seasoned veteran cop and he's like just fucking shooting people and the new guy's like well that's not by the book well that's not what they taught us at the academy and they're like listen kid i've been on this for fucking 40 years <laughs> you don't shoot first you're dead you know and it's like and the kid's like oh, oh boy you know like that's so that's such like a typical dynamic because i remember when i got into this i met all these old heads and i'm like they don't even read books they don't even care about arguments and shit and now that i've been in this for five years i'm like you don't understand <laughs> i've been on war so long and so you know i'm just on here just like a lot da, la -di da you know conjecturing and uh nigga comes in here like you know well, actually, if you, you know, I'm citing what I said here, and it's like, who has, who has the energy? Who has a younger man, a younger man who hasn't seen war for years, has the energy to, you know, debate vigorously about these, you know, banalities? Yeah. 
dude. I get. I mean, I, I love kind of death. I get exhausted <laughs> talking to him. It's it's exhausting and just listening to him talk for sometimes for me because I'm just like, ah, dude. I don't care. <laughs> Like, I just, I just, like, just sum it up. Give me the cliff notes of whatever you're saying, please. Like, I get yeah, it, though. I, I mean, he's he's excited, he's young, and you just chalk it up to age, you know? I mean, I'm fucking 33, about to be 34, fucking old man, but just, like, yeah, just, just give me the cliff notes, you know? Well, it's like, I'll do it. I'll go there, you know? I'll, I'll go there, and I'll I'll do the debate, and, uh, you know, I'll, come, you know, people are like, wow, Nick really thought this out, someone said, and it's like, no, I'm making this up as I go along, you know, like, you, you wanted to drag this out of me? Fine, drag it out of me at 3 a.m., um, but, um, but yeah, you come, you know, I'm coming in here, and I'm just free thinking, <laughs> free thinking, everybody always wants to fucking take a shot at the title. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion of uh, if Nick tells me I'm, a, I'm out of line, you know, I'm just like, you know what? Time for a little self introspection, you know. That was a fart, by the way. Did you hear that? I did. It was, it was a pretty good fart. I put the, no, I was kind of weak. I put the phone to my ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like at your face. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> You're awake yeah, I drank a lot of coffee, so I'm kind of, uh, you know gassy yeah no, i mean i don't know you know you know how it is i mean it's just like we've both been in this so long it's just like i just i you know i think that's part of it is too it's like if you say something to me i just i trust you well enough to be like all right i'll think about it you know it's like you know because i mean i remember during Groy war you know i got into a beef with somebody or whatever and you're like hey you know kind of cool it a little bit and i was like yeah all right it's you i mean i know you well enough i mean all right you know, it's just one of those things. Kai doesn't really have that sort of... He doesn't have that, like, um... I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but... He hasn't, he hasn't cert, like, that camaraderie, I guess, that, like, we've all developed over the years, too. Yeah, well, he's young. It's an age thing. I was that age. You, yeah. you know, people used to say that about me. People used to say, oh, this kid, he's, uh, you know, so it's... I, I like him. He's a smart kid kid and all that yeah. and you know he's in this thing and time will time will tell because it's not easy you know and there's no mm -hmm. you can't be petty in the foxhole and we're in a foxhole so he's with us and um you know we'll see he's a newer younger guy and we'll we'll see the course everybody takes you, you know, you're surprised you know, you're surprised some people you like turn out to be evil some people you don't like turn out to be amazing some people the expectations are consistent yeah and that's the thing too it's like uh you know you can't write everybody off just because a few people stabbed you in the back too you know that's a very it's a very easy thing to slip into where you just start distrusting everybody but um yeah you just can't do that it's not healthy and i think kai's yeah. got good intentions i mean He's a good kid. He's just a kid, you know. That's why we gotta, you know, we just gotta, you know, talk, we, hell, we beat Jaden up for like two years straight, you know. Now look at him. He's a fucking Chad, you know. He's just fucking mm -hmm. getting it. But so we gotta do that to Kai and Dalton. Just beat the fuck out of him for two straight years. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Jaden's gonna kill us all. He's gonna be like <laughs> Private Pile and Full Metal Jacket, I think. <laughs> you know, one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna get up in his face and say. You know, start taunting and he's gonna fucking shoot me. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've already cut that shit out. I'm done picking on Jaden. You know, now that we got the new blood in, it's like, all right, I can lay off Jaden now. I can just lay lay in on these new kids because otherwise Jaden's gonna fucking you know, assisted suicide me or something. He's like a white nerd with ADHD. So if he ever starts reaching in his backpack, I'm I'm just running away as fast <laughs> as I can. I'm the bully. I'm the bully. I gotta be his friend now. I gotta be nice to him. Or else. Yeah. It's gonna be. He's gonna say, uh, "Hey, Beardson, you've been all right. Don't go to Cozy TV tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I've yeah, I've been trying to. I've been trying to get in, get in good on the on the Jaden because uh, yeah, I got. You can tell he like he starts to break a little bit. And that's like, all right, so I don't turn lay off. You know, I don't want to. I don't get caught in the crossfire. I'll let him let him go off on Nick. You know, he's like the kid that is parents ban him from his xbox and then he <laughs> shoots him with a shotgun when they go to bed <laughs> like the energy he's uh he's gonna say that to jimbo he's gonna be like he's gonna be like 
hey, Jimbo, you've been all right to me. Don't go to Cozy tomorrow. And then he's going to come and fucking kill me and you. He's going to kill us with a fucking <laughs> golf of friends. <laughs> golf club. <laughs> he's going to fucking hit us with the head with a rock like in Rust. Yeah, yeah, like in Lord of the Flies, <laughs> throw a fucking rock on my head. Get a fucking bow and arrow and just fucking hit us in the neck with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clip that, clip that, clip that. Just got Pearson in the neck, clip that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man, I think I'm going to hit the hay, man. I'm beat. Oh, all right. What, you What you? You want to go, You want to keep going? I, you sound tired as hell. I was trying to give you an out. Yeah, no, you're right. I should go to bed. Yeah, you sound beat, man. Yeah, I am. It's been a long week. Yeah. Been a lot of fucking driving around here. Been driving for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Well, hey, thanks for uh, hosting my show for me tonight. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate <laughs> it. I got some uh, super chats to read, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it here. Oh, awesome! I'm glad I don't have to read those. Yeah, I mean, you can if you want. I can. I can just send you my login. And- no, I me. come in for the monologue. I leave for the super chats. Yeah. <laughs> All right, King. Good All night. Right. Good night, buddy. Talk to you later. Yeah, see ya. Bye-bye.